Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Boots and Backstraps podcast. Brought to you by Homes by Shane and produced by Danny Geo Productions. Come on now. On his own, looking for backstraps, way deep in the woods. Tracking in a swamp to a hayfield under the harvest moon. When the tags are filled, it's time to switch up our boots. Head down to the honky tonk, get us a swing dance or two. We're talking about boots and backstraps. Hey everybody, this is a show where we talk all things hunting and country music. From the classics through today. From big bucks to bull elk. We've got it all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Boots and Backstraps. I am your host, Shane Michael, and I'm joined as always by my dashing, handsome, and very experienced co-host, Tom Cat. Come on now. How we doing, sir? Doing great, man. It is uh, sweltering today, brother. Man, here in Minnesota... You know, I was talking to a car salesman today, and he says... That's not ever a good idea. <laughs> he was a great guy. I was okay. selling my cousin's car, and they bought it from me. Good. Long story, but he said, I'm not going to complain. He says, I know what it's going to be like in six or seven months. And I don't know. I, You know, I love spring. Mm-hmm. My fall, fall is our favorite time of year. Right. And it's a toss-up between winter and summer. And when it gets like this, I'm not happy. You know, I, I'm I'm not enjoying the sweltering heat, and yeah. uh, especially with the humidity that we get here in Minnesota. And can you imagine being in Iowa, Kansas, uh, Missouri? Missouri. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how they do it. I got a, as you know, I got a brother who lives down in Missouri, and yep. he's always talking about he'll take a shower, get dried off, he'll go out to get his mail, come back in, it look like he just got out of the pool. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's crazy. So uh, it is. It's 95 degrees here today, and. Uh, Hotter than hell, and the last time I was this hot, I was on the dock. You were, you were 25? <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're warming it up early. I know. <laughs> uh, I was at Lord Fletcher's yeah. uh, a few days ago, and you were there with me. I was. It was hotter than hell. In a front row seat, in, in fact. In a front row seat, watching a guy perform, and he, he had him lit up, man. He had everybody lit up. I was there with... Uh, Matt Nathun, who we've had on the show. Yep, owner of the WeFest. New owner of the WeFest. And uh, we watched a guy named Dave McElroy, who played football for the Minnesota Gophers, linebacker. Indeed. And uh, he's got three top 20 hits on the country charts, which is really amazing. And he's never performed at the WeFest. So there's a little bio and a little intro of to who our guest is this week we may know somebody that can fix that whole we fest thing don't we tk i think we do i think we do he's done it before yes sir (laughs) anyway ladies and gentlemen we have a great guest with us here this evening and uh i'm pretty darn excited because i i think the all of our fans that are watching they're gonna say i remember when i saw him on the boots and backstrap show (laughs) after now he's become a Great big huge Boy, celebrity. He's a superstar, right? Yeah. Say I saw him at they're gonna say I saw him at Lord Fletcher's, I saw him on the boots and back straps. Anyway, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, my new good friend David McElroy. What's uh, up everybody? How are you? Welcome to the show. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. And yeah, man, this weather's been insane. Yeah. It's like it, I get it. Like every couple of years we'll get that in mid August where we'll get that hundred degree stretch. Man, it's, it's early. Thick. It's so thick when you walk out the door, it hits you right in the face. Like you could drill a nail into it. It's so thick. You know what I mean? So it's it's hot. It's hard June. to hit a, it's hard to hit a golf ball into it. <laughs> <laughs> I golf in a league. Not, like a wall. <laughs> well, yeah, the guys that I golf with are using, you know, they're going a club up. Yeah. To get through the thickness of the air. That's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. Man, David, it's great to have you here, man. We it's had so much here. fun the other night. Yeah, that was um, a blast. It was our first time seeing David perform live, and uh, he, he did light it up. And I know it wasn't because Matt was there or because I was there. It was because it's nature. Yeah. This is how he performs. And right. Yeah. You know, all the years that I've been doing this, I've – well, there's one show that we did. Randy and I did it in uh, uh, Wisconsin, and no, not too many people showed up. And I walked up to Alan Jackson, and I said – 
gee, I'm sure sh sorry there's not more people out there. And he says, don't matter to me. He says, if there's 10 or 10,000 out there, I'm going to give you the same show and the same amount of enthusiasm. Yep. I know that if you're going to be a good entertainer, that's what you got to do. And I know you do that. Oh, absolutely. We talked about that a little the other day. And I've got two rules in the band. And one is no egos. Nobody's right. allowed to have an ego in our band. We're just a bunch of dudes just so grateful to be doing what we do, what we do with the skills that God gave us. And, and number two is nobody's ever allowed to phone in a show. You know, people are waiting all week, all month, you know, whatever. They just want to check out whether they're coming to see me or I'm just part of a bigger festival, whatever it is. Right. They're coming to check out. They're coming to just be done with reality for a little bit, shake off work a little bit, and just have a great time. And it's our job to deliver every single time. And, yep. and that's what we do. So like you said, I felt a little bit like a caged animal. I'm used to working on a bigger stage. And I was going to say, you look like a tiger in a dog kennel. You're just pacing. Like. <laughs> well, I pace during my normal show, but usually I'm pacing 25 feet across, 30, 25 feet back. I'm up on top of the speaker or whatever. But, um, You're like, turn guitar player, turn guitar player. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly, right? And so it was a little bit different of show. But like you said, it doesn't matter. The energy still has to be there. And yeah. I just feel it. I feel the music deeply, and it just comes out that way, I guess. so. Well, you absolutely, excuse me, Shane, you have absolutely the right philosophy. You know, I, I, I feel like I should start a business where I'd go and meet young people in Nashville or wherever they are, and they're starting a band, and explain to them, you got to lose your ego. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, there's a formula. If you're a band... There's a formula that makes you successful. Right. I, I think of Little Texas as a perfect example and Restless Heart, how the egos got so involved. And, you know, egos are egos and life is life. It is what it is. But, but boy, you, you got to remember what? that formula that got yeah. you there, man. Yeah. And you know what else? What in the world is there to have an ego about? Right. If anything, I feel like I'm a like lesser, lesser than. I get to make a living singing. Mm -hmm. Right. right? And to me, that is no more important than all the years I spent using my hands to make a living or all my friends that are doctors, mechanics, yep. engineers, whatever. It's all, it's all a job. It just so happens that I love mine passionately. And I'm just so blessed to be able to, uh, you know, my mom always says, if you love your work, you'll never work another day in your life. And Absolutely. I'm just kind of happy to be in that sweet spot. But my job is no more important or less important as anybody else's job. There's no reason to have an ego about well, any of this. You David, it's, I mean? it's us, the fans, yeah. that create the egos and the entertainers. It's this and, oh, can I do anything for you? And, oh, I'd do anything to be your friend. Right. And, well, <laughs> all of a sudden they may start out with like a politician with sincere intentions. Yeah. But all of a sudden, whoop, 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 whoop. Are there lobbyists for musicians? Because that would be terrible. <laughs> yeah, I know. There are lobbyists for musicians, believe me. Yeah. Uh, They're gross. called promoters. It is gross. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, but I understand what you're saying. You know, I've experienced a lot of that. But. You know, the Lord keeps me grounded. Yep. If not that, my friends and family keep me grounded. If yep. not that, my band keeps me grounded. We all keep each other grounded, and, and it's just there's just no place for anything else in our lives. Well, I wish every entertainer had that philosophy, Dave, but you know as well as I do, they don't. And yeah. uh, things like that are going to make you uh, extremely successful in anything that you do, especially your music career. Thank so you. We're, One of the things I was going to say, TK, is we talked about – just seeing all the joy in your face interacting yeah. with the people on Friday. Yeah. Not all musicians do that. They get so grounded on the stage, like they've grown roots. Oh, right. And they want to sit up there and just perform and let people kind of ogle them. And you just could not that, wait to get off that stage. That is not my job. My yeah. job is to put smiles on people's faces. Yeah. And, and I love it. I love that interaction with the crowd. I love the interaction with our friends all around the country that come to visit. Like, we don't call our fans fans. We call them friends because... Yeah. Every one of them that we've met so far is so cool. Like, they are just just the neatest people. Like, everybody's got some really cool story to tell and, and something about them that makes them special, you know. And Here's a shout out. You had a show? Yeah, so... Uh, that's Where a, was this? You know, that one's actually right here in Minnesota. Okay. Um, that was Strawberry Fest in Cottage Grove, and that huh. was super fun. I'm looking at the food truck. Like, did they got cheese curds? <laughs> oh, yeah, you bet they did. And the worst part is I can't have cheese or any other dairy products when I'm singing because that's like the killer of every singer's right. voice is dairy. Every singer stays away from 
Jerry yeah. before shows, like days before shows, because it makes you kind of phlegmy, it makes it hard to hit your high and low notes, and so. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so I'm constantly taunting when we do these fairs and festivals with cheese curds and other delicious <laughs> items that I want to. People are walking in. by, like, "Hey, it's a great show." You're like, "Get that away from me!" <laughs> oh yeah, till the last day of the show, and I know I don't have to sing again for a week. I'm like, Tum, tum, "Bring tum. me a bucket." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's super fun. Well, let's have a toast here, gents. Yeah, boys. In honor of our show here tonight. Cheers. David, TK, over Shane, uh, I'm Eric. I'm Eric tapping you, buddy. You got it, pal. Oh, Two of our it. favorite Rowdy Cowboy Show oh. sponsors, Jack Daniels and Coors Light. Oh, really? I'm never going to get tired of Jack Daniels. Me either. Ever. There's a lot of great bourbons out there, but Jack just seems to hit it just right hit every time. Hit the spot just right. It's yep. like Old Faithful. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something you can count on to be right every time. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man! There's well, anyway, the show was fun. We can count on like that, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's, it's like, is that sad or is it happy? I think yeah, it's happy, but it's happy. Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, so. Exactly. None of us here have a problem, so. Nope. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the only problem I ever have is when I run out. Right. That's a problem. That is a problem. <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah, for sure. It's like that's a drinking problem when you're getting nothing to drink. <laughs> I have. A I bunch... think that's a song. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> you know, Shane, I got a bunch of friends that I I mentor at my church and. A bunch of my Christian mm. friends are like, what are you doing? I said, we're not pounding it. We're just having yeah. a little sip. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Mark, we're just having a little sip, okay? <laughs> well, it's the same thing. Like, I wrote a song called Hanging With My Friends. Yep. And the idea of your end song is, you know, I don't need, you know, those high flutin' drinks like uh, Dom Perignon and, and Cristal and all those things. Just give me a couple of beers and a whiskey and I'm good to go. Yeah. And, and Love like, George Thoreau good? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, kind of, you know. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be, you know, you could turn people into alcoholics. I'm like, no, no, I'm just, I'm just speaking my truth. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm just a regular guy that drinks regular things. Yeah, you know? absolutely. We yeah. could tell right away in the show, you're just a down home, you know, yeah. salt of the earth, blue collar. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You know, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, yeah. first time I met Dave, everybody, um, he said to me, I don't understand why they never took a look at me at the Wii Fest. Yeah. And it was as clear as a bell as soon as you said those words to me. I knew that you weren't going to uh, be at the Wii Fest because nobody from Minnesota, nobody from Minnesota uh, was involved with the Wii Fest right. for like the last eight years. Yeah. And uh, basically, as my career started to eclipse from that point, yeah, during that point, it was the East Coast conglomerate that had WeFest. So what would they call again? Town Square? Is Town Square was? Media. Yeah. 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 And I certainly don't want to say anything negative about them. No. But I think they're. Uh, I think they made a mistake when they eliminated all the Minnesota presence, right. whether it be the sponsors, uh, the employees. Um, right. There was just no Minnesota present. You know, they're a huge conglomerate, and they have national sponsorship. Right. And that's what they, that's what they did. That's what they right, wanted. Right. I'm quite sure they probably did real well and did their little stint, and now we have it back. And it's probably, Dave, you know, because the time you started mm -hmm. is the time when we sold the WeFest. Right, right. And so now that we have it back, I mean, you, you had said to me, if anyone cancels this year, you know, I'm, I'm available – uh, we don't want to do that. You know, yeah. we want to bill you next year, yeah. and we want to make sure you get all the attention and all the promotion that uh, you're worthy of. And who knows what's going to happen this year? I know it's going to be better than right. what the last show was because the word is out. Yeah. The word oh, yeah. is out. Minnesota has it back. Has it back. The year off last year helped. Right. Yeah. You know, kind of yeah, get that mindset for people like we're coming back. Yeah, so next absolutely. year, you know. Uh, I'll be on stage all day, and uh, this year Kelly Pickler is going to be hosting, okay. and I'm going to be helping her. And then, very cool. Um, She's a homegrown. Her husband is, you know. I didn't her, know her that. husband's from Lakeville, Minnesota. Really? Yeah, and he does a lot of writing for, uh, like, uh, oh, Lee Bryce. Oh, oh, you're yeah. kidding? Yep, yep. He's uh, his mother. Actually, taught two of my kids. No way. In, in grade school, yeah. And uh, she's a substitute teacher, and so, yeah, her husband's from here, and and uh, it's pretty cool. But, you know, like you were saying, I said, if there's anything I can do this year, that'd be great, because yeah. it's such an institution, we fast. Yeah. 
And as it turns out, now I'm booked solid that weekend. So it's <laughs> so yeah. it didn't work out. Well, that but, doesn't but, surprise but me. I, but I definitely want to be there for next year. Yeah. And uh, it's just this, these are my people. I know. Do you know what I mean? And, and Emily, it's sad. It's too bad this, that nobody. Uh... Yeah, and it's the craziest thing. Like I, it hurt me deeply when my friends are saying, well, "Why aren't you playing Weed Fest here? Well, why aren't you playing Weed Fest? Like you're doing all these big things. Why aren't you playing Weed Fest?" I'm like, I don't know. I just can't get their attention. And and, it's and just, that's you why. Know, yeah, because yeah. when we had the Wii Fest, naturally, of course, yeah. you know, it, it only made sense. We had all of the up and coming acts in the Twin Cities, right? And for that matter, out of the Dakotas, and mm-hmm. Wisconsin, and wherever, yeah. and you know, logic dictates that. Okay, if I got four really big acts coming out of the Twin Cities, they're going to bring all of their friends and right. all of the people that follow them. Mm-hmm. So now you're selling more tickets. Right. And they didn't have that mindset. Well, and, but the crazy thing was, you know, I'm sending, we're sending them all my stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I am not harsh to not Town Square Media because they play my songs on their radio stations. Right. <laughs> but I'm saying, but, but, <laughs> somebody beep, wasn't getting like, like, <laughs> yeah, but somebody wasn't getting my pack. It's like, yeah, we're direct support for Keith Urban, Little Big Town, Jason L. Dean, Old Dominion, all these huge bands. And then I went into the phase where I started headlining fairs and festivals and big concert venues myself. Yep. And I still couldn't say, listen, your homegrown boy is, but I just couldn't get, you know, my team couldn't get through the right people. It seemed right. to be changing every year who was handling the booking. It just, it is what it is. You know, it's just one of those things where it's just missed opportunities. And so now here we are and. Yeah, here we are, and God put us together. Yeah, God put us together, and it's going to be super great to get back home next year. And I just, anytime I can play anywhere in the Midwest, you know, in Green Bay where I grew up or here, it's just killer. It's so good. You know, we're going to keep that quiet, Dave. What's that? (laughs) Green Bay. The Wisconsin thing. (laughs) Ah, no, I know. I grew grew up in Green Bay. You can't grow up in Green Bay and not be a Packer fan. And and it's funny because my buddies who played for the Vikings, you know, that are like real standout players for the Vikings, you know, Lieber and Greenway and all yep. those guys. Really good dudes. Oh, super great dudes, like great human beings. And like, and their wives are amazing. Like they're doing great things for other people that they've got a heart for giving. These great guys. But I tell you what, when I wear my Packer gear at a game at Lambeau, because I've got season tickets and I post it, I get shredded. I get shredded <laughs> by all of them, including their wives. Their wives shred me. Like what's uninvited that? to birthday parties yeah, and stuff? Yeah, what's that ugly crap you're wearing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, I lived in Wisconsin for a few years. I had a club in River Falls, Wisconsin. and Okay. I, when I, you know, I knew we always had a rivalry, but yeah. I have to tell you, uh, growing up in Minnesota, I always rooted for the Packers when they were playing other teams. Oh, yeah. Because they were our neighbor. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that's the way it went. And Diplomatic way, and fans. And that's the way it is in Green Bay. Like, if we're out of it, we're knocked out, everybody gets behind the bikes. You know what I mean? And the funny thing is, like, I've got, like, hundreds and like, thousands of friends from Minnesota that have gone to Packer games at Lambeau. And every year I throw a big tailgate for the Packer, you know, Viking game and all. Everybody comes out and put on a crazy spread. <laughs> and what they all tell me is they're amazed. Like, every time they come in, they never get yelled at. They never get scowled at. People just start not like going them. to Philly or something, right? right. You know, people you just took the words beers. out of my mouth. Yeah, people just start handing them beers. They're they oh, literally yeah. like, "Oh, I got a great Philly story to tell if you want to hear it." Yeah, of course we do. <laughs> but no, like, people are very Green Bay fans are very welcoming of they the, are. the opposing fans. And, I was just gonna say, uh, you know, no one in Green Bay is gonna throw beer cans at Vikings fans because they're gonna drink the beer. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, why waste it? That's alcohol abuse, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, but no, so I go to. Game in Philly, it's a Packer playoff game against Philly. And I am told by everybody I know, do not wear your Packer gear in there. They literally have a judge and a jail there on site. You are immediately brought to court and thrown in jail on site there. So they're like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. I'm like, listen, I'm not going to not wear my Packer gear. And he goes, you're crazy. So I got my hat on, my hoodie on, my jacket on because it's a cold game. Yeah. And I said, when I get out of this car, I'm going to go find the biggest, baddest (laughs) fan I can. And I'm going to walk walk right up to him and give him a big hug. He goes, you're insane. (laughs) And I did. This dude had to be like 6'7". He's like, I know you're you're not coming over here. I'm like, oh, yeah, I am. And I'm going to give you a hug. And I did. And we laughed our asses off. Excuse my language. And then we ended up playing 
bag toss for the next couple hours, and I was drinking with him for the next three hours before the game Good started. Good for you, man. That's awesome. Uh, that was great. Yeah. I thought you were going to say you were going to find the biggest, baddest <laughs> Philly fan, and you were going to punch him right between the eyes. <laughs> no, no. I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. <laughs> he starts a war <laughs> in Philly. Starts a war in Philly. That no, just ain't right. And, and I have a lifelong friend from that group. There's a principal of a Catholic high school that was in that group of guys. Oh, cool. And we've been friends. That whole group has been friends ever since we talked. Was he wearing eagle gear? Oh, yeah, straight up. They're all full of eagle gear, all of them. Diehard eagle fans and ended up partying. You're like, come on, let's mix our greens. Come on. Mix our greens. Yeah, that's exactly. (laughs) Make an awesome salad. (laughs) Let's mix the greens. That's a great story. (laughs) Yeah, so it ended up being a lot of fun. I'm still friends with those guys today. You know, there's a house, right? And I've never been to Lambeau, but there's a party house. It's all painted yellow and green. Oh, yeah. And the people that own that house were at our restaurant. Lynn and I used to own. Uh, a steakhouse in Lionel Lakes called Red Oak Steaks and Wine. Okay. Well, this whole group was in our restaurant. They were in town for some reason, and they had so much fun, and we had so much fun together. They said, you have to hear. Here's our address. I've yeah. got tickets. You know, whatever you want, just get there yeah. and hang with us and party with us. We're right across the street from Lambo. I know the exact house. I bet you do. Yeah. And uh, we never... And I always wanted to. We never had the opportunity oh, to get over Well, there. you know, you can come with me, brother, anytime you want. Um, TK, we got this. Let's do it. So, yeah. You got to drag me because I'm the football fan in our duo. <laughs> like, die <laughs> hard. You got to see I my just, theater set up at the house. Up? Tomcat. Yeah, TK and Shane. TK, yeah. But I thought for a second that one is it TC? TK. Oh, t- yeah, TK. He All spells right. it with K A T T. K A T T. Tomcat. Okay. That's right. Catchy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's cat chi. Ah, <laughs> that's beautiful. So now you got to tell him how the like Tomcat thing came about. Like he needs to hear that story. Really, I've never talked about this on air. You haven't. That's I why I think it's a good time know. to throw it out there. I'd love to know. Well, there are very few people in the world that know my birth name, and well, you know, I, back in the seventies, I was a disc jockey. And disco music was really hot. And I was actually the first Twin Cities nightclub disc jockey. Like oh, in wow. 1972. That's pretty cool. And You probably don't remember 1972. I know. I <laughs> no, nope, I don't. But anyway, that's still cool. Yeah. Um, I was doing a show in Hopkins. Yeah. And this small-time promoter put put uh, flyers on everybody's windshield in the, like a four block radius. Back yeah. when that wasn't against the law. <laughs> right. Yeah. And come right. and see the Tomcat disco show. Oh, and no I s- saw one of those flyers and I'm like, what? And it had a character of a cat right. with a tail and a hat on and yeah. blah, blah, blah. It was just cheesy. I right. Mean, it was so cheesy. <laughs> and he said, oh, I thought that'd be kind of cool. And I said, well, I don't think it's cool at all. And please don't do it again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, wow, this is interesting that I'm telling this story. Because 50 years later, he's still Tom Cat. Tom Cat. <laughs> uh, not 50. Well, maybe 50. That's 50, brother. <laughs> uh, next, anyway, next year, 50. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I couldn't shake the name. And then, you know, I, I became a little bit more legitimate. And I started working with a company called Entertech, mm. Entertainment Technology. And we yeah. designed clubs all over the united states and i trained disc jockeys all over the united states yeah and so the guy charlie sinkler who's dead now uh god rest his soul was a cool cool guy he designed clubs all over the world and made so many people successful he said you know you're never going to shake that name but why don't we change it to uh cat k-a-t-t make it a little more because that's a real name like william cat the actor and right um so we did, and I was getting checks with my birth name and Tomcat from different clubs, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, one day, I get a call from the IRS. Oh. And it says, we have two people here with the same social security number. Oh. One's name is Tomcat, one's name is Tom Wilsbacher. And I said, oh, they're both me. Oh. And, and I'm like, they said, well, I said, I'm sorry if that, if that created it. I was real polite. Yeah. And they were real polite. Yeah. And I said, I'm sorry if that created any. No, no, no. He says, we're going to send you some paperwork, and you fill it out, and that's going to make Tomcat a legal name. So I said, oh, that's fine. And so I filled out the paperwork, sent it back to the IRS. And since then, can you imagine going through life with a name Tomcat 
and everyone everyone you meet literally right. says how did you get that name or where's oh, that yeah. or is that your real name after years of explaining that same story right. i finally just got to a point and they say is that your real name i just say yep yep and i'm sorry i, I don't feel like i'm fitting do you say do you it's say it's my legal name you say yep <laughs> Tomcat. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got tired of explaining that story, and I just like, and yeah. I, I there now a lot of people that know the whole story, and there was like, and I'm certainly not ashamed of my name by any means, like yeah. John Cougar, you know John Mellencamp, you know, yeah. and I, I just it is what it is, you and know, I that, just roll with it. And, that brings up an interesting point. Um, somebody wants to ask me like, well, why didn't you use a like a different name, stage name, stage name, you know, rather than just your, your real name right off the bat. And I said, what's Jason L. Dean's real name? Blah. What's, you know, Keith Urban's real name? Blah. You know, it's like everybody finds out in like one minute anyway. Yeah. What you is Keith what I mean? Urban's so, real so name? So what's the point? I don't know. But it's not Keith Urban. No, not, none of them. Like, See, Jason I don't L. know Dean, that. Like all these guys don't have their own real names. Right. You know, and so. And but they, you know, everybody knows it immediately, and so it's like, what's the point? Why not? Yeah, yeah. it's a lot easier Nothing just wrong to with be. Dave it's Mantle, a lot right? easier just to be you. You yeah. know what I mean? So everybody's got Wikipedia; they're gonna figure it out. They're gonna figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Nothing wrong with Shane Hall. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Shane Michael, that, like my stage name, yeah. is actually my name because my, my middle name is Michael. Oh, oh okay. So okay. I was like, I was. There were. I'm trying to remember when I got in the business. There was another popular Shane. And so Shane Michael just kind of became like a way to differentiate oh, from the other, the other Shane. Other yeah. Shane. Yeah, this is back in the early '90s. Okay. We got Jason Aldean Williams. Now, who wouldn't want a name like Jason Williams, like Hank Williams? Yeah, and my name, like people, are like don't change it. It's a great country name. It's it is. You know, Mac it's a great Roy, golfer it's like name. McGraw. It's like you know, yeah. It's a great so, golfing yeah. name. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> golfing name. Spelled differently, but yeah, it's still pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get in the way back machine, my man, because I want to hear about do it. you. I mean, I've done done a little homework on you. Yeah, I like to yeah. do that before we get in the show. It's my job as the quarterback to do that. Right. And so I know you grew up in kind of a farming family. Yep. So let's talk about that, like how you, you know, growing up in your family and, and growing up with that influence of working hard and getting up when the sun comes up and all that. Oh, yeah. I mean, every single day I got from the time I was 10 on, I got three knocks on my door. Five or five thirty, one of the two, and my dad would say half hour. That meant I had a half hour to get up, get out the door, and be ready to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was cool because you know I'd get myself up, I'd shower, I'd make my lunch, and eat my breakfast out the door in thirty minutes. In thirty minutes, that's moving. Yeah. Well, a lot of times I'd shower the night before from that long day's work. You know, and oh, yeah. and, uh, and then my dad and I would go out, and it was really cool because. Um, he'd always have a huge mug of coffee and he'd stop every day right before he got in, take a big drink. So he could put his mug down on the floorboard and it wouldn't slosh out when we drove the truck to work. And, uh, this is in the later days when it was just dad and I, when my, some of my brothers and sisters had already grown up and moved on. And so I'm the fifth of six. Okay. And, uh, and the smell of the coffee and then dad would put one of the grates in. Did he drink it black? He drank it, well, no, he drank it with uh, a little cream. Okay. A little cream and uh, and one sugar. Okay. And uh, and he would uh, put in one of the grates like Loretta or somebody. And, oh, yeah. And we just quietly drive to work, and he'd look over and smile at me. And the smell of the coffee and, and all that was, it just brings back a lot of really vivid memories of that time spent with my dad working. And and uh, then off we'd go, and we'd, we'd work all day, and, and we'd work all night, too. A lot of times. So, how long did you work with your dad? I mean, several oh, years. Oh man, I several years from the time I was ten till I was out of college. Wow! So every summer, you know, I'd be, you know, when I was in school, he let me finish my sports, and it was right to work. And because <laughs> I was a four sport athlete in high school, and um, then I was also in choir, swing choir, jazz, jazz band, in the the school musicals, the whole ten yards, and. I went to a school where it was cool to be in the school musicals and to be in band and choir. It was an all boys Catholic high school. We were won the all state award for academics and athletics. We had more athletic points than any other school in the state, both public wow. and and uh, private. And um, and the girls came over for all that stuff, so it was cool. 
So, what was the name of the school? I went to Promontory High School in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Promontory. So, and it's now shout called, out to Promontory. Yeah, man. And now it's called Notre Dame. They combined all three Catholic high schools from Green Bay together to form one big Catholic high school now. Well, here so. we are, three little Catholic boys all sitting here together. Oh, yeah, yeah buddy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I love the fact that before we did this today, we prayed first. Because yep. we do that before anything we do as a band, anything in life, we pray first. Yep. And uh, so I really appreciate that a great deal. Oh, yeah, we like to send that signal out, and uh, yeah. in our closing, we talk about the Lord, and uh, it's real important to us as well. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll see it in my hunting and fishing shows too. For every meal, you'll see us bowing ahead before we go out, bowing ahead and praying together. And and uh, it's just important. It's important to get that message out. That's important to me. It's important to me and my family. And yep. Yep. We wouldn't have anything without God. Oh, no, Everything nothing. Everything in our lives is because of God. Oh, it's, you know, all, it's all just a gift from the Lord, and it's just, yeah, absolutely. I, I hope that the people that are listening, you know, they see three guys like us. David is obviously very successful. I've had a real wonderful and fun career. Um, you, are, I do a couple things. Yeah, you've, <laughs> you've done so well, and you have got such Thank an you. outstanding, outstanding reputation. Thank you. Um, You know, I just hope that people listening hear that. And I hope that they want to be maybe a little bit like us. And um, that's the way to do it. You know what's funny is I had a very successful business going when I felt the Lord moving me back to music. Uh What were you doing? And uh, I had uh, one of the largest lawn and landscape companies here in the Twin Cities. Okay. And I felt the Lord prompting me, and I'm like, Listen, Lord, if you want me to do this, you got to break out a two by four because I got a pretty good company going here and yeah. I'm making some good money for my family. It and, can't be a tap on the shoulder, right? <laughs> right. And so he did. He broke out two by four. He said, This is what I want from you. And, and honestly, the goal is that if even one fan, like at the end of every show or in every interview I do, I give all the credit to the Lord. Yeah. I talk about that on a regular basis because, I mean, come on, look at me, man. You've met me now. You know I'm not capable of pulling off the stuff I've pulled off. <laughs> it's clearly the Lord's hand is involved, right? <laughs> and, I, uh, I love your energy. I talk, yeah. commented to Tom about that at the yeah. show Friday. I was like, this guy, I gotta, I don't see the cord behind him, but he's plugged in something. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, um, and it's cool because um, I think what the Lord wanted is for me to put that out there. So at the end of every show, I never get in the soapbox, but in every interview, at the end of every show, I might say, God bless all y'all. I'm, I heard praying, you. I'm praying for you until I see you next time. And I do. Every Friday, I pray for all my friends out there across the world and the country that listen to my music and whatnot. I pray for all of them. And, and We can um, use it. I'm telling you. you know, well, the hope is that if even one fan's life isn't going the right way and they're just not happy with their life, things aren't awesome, and they go, well, you know what? Dave seems so positive. He's so happy. What does he have that I don't have? Well, that's it. He mentions the Lord a lot, so maybe that's what I need in my mm. life. And that's the whole thing behind this thing. It's just the whole reason I'm doing country music. It's so one of the and things if you I just love. surrender your life to Jesus, I'm telling you. Yeah. You know, David, another thing that they might want to, they need to hear is it makes your life so much easier. Oh, Because yeah. people are banging their head against the wall trying yeah. to figure this out and trying to figure that out and trying to do this and trying to do that, and they're losing sleep and they're losing their marriages, when you turn your life over to the Lord, yeah. all of a sudden, it might sound lazy or a cop-out, but all of a sudden you just let him make your decisions for you, yep. and he will. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's, once you figure yeah. that out, yeah. all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm do, free do you, indeed. Do you know the greatest gift the Lord ever gave me? What's that? Was allowing me to feel what it's like to live in his light and allowing me to feel what it's like to not be. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it was terrifying. Yeah. It was, it was just like, I only want to be here yeah. because there is no bueno. Right. You know, it's just, it's like, it's pure chaos in your mind and everything else. And <laughs> um, it's just really cool. So what you said is right on the money. One of the things I was going to mention about Catholic specifically is I love the concept of offering it up. Oh, your yeah. struggles, your suffering, you offer that up. And I do oh, that yeah. quite, quite frequently when I am down the dumps a little and I say, Lord, I offer up this suffering 
to ease someone else's suffering. Let me suffer in this moment right? so that someone else can suffer less. Oh, man, dude. Amen. That is some good stuff. I, I, That's fantastic. I you know, my new thing. prayer is going to be, Father, let Shane suffer for me oh. today, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll do it. I'll do it. So thank you for uh, offering that up, Chris. <laughs> You're, Lord, you're please bring scapegoat. Shane some suffrage <laughs> for my well-being. Something tells me he will answer that prayer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Shane's Shane like, Dave, stop saying that prayer. I know. I'll be like, what is, it, like today is unusually hard. What's going on? What's going it must on? be Tom, Tom and Dave. <laughs> Can you please shut up? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, rather than the immediate go-to, you're instinctual as a uh, human being. As to if you pray to say, Lord, can you ease my suffering? Right. I like to take an opposite approach. Like, no, let right. me suffer in this moment. Let me suffer today. Let this, right. you know, pain or whatever go so that someone else can be easier today. Well, you know what? It's funny because a little while ago I had kidney stones, like wicked bad. So yeah. a lot of us uh, singers will, will take like a, uh, what do they call it? Um, so you don't get acid reflux. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like and a so, or something. yeah, there's one particular we were taking, which I won't name that, um, it turns out they create huge kidney stones Uh-oh. and I've been taking it for like a year oh. and, uh, and I got some whoppers, like they were massive and the pain was excruciating. I have been told it's worse than childbirth. I'm not going By nurses. There. I'm not <laughs> nurses. I am, female I nurses. am not going to alienate the female <laughs> fan base, but no, um, but that pain was excruciating, and and I offered that up the whole time. I was offering it up for other people, Good for you, uh, bro. people in purgatory, people that were or suffering, or people with cancer, or it was a whole variety of things that because it can up always be worse, time. right? Yeah, just that their suffering be lessened. Yeah, you know what I mean. Good for um, you, man. That's awesome. So, but wow. I mean, it's just, as yeah. Christians, you know, we're always learning, and I just learned something from both of you today. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Good Old start. dog learning new tricks over there. All like right. It. Yes. Woof. We'll see if I can uh, be as gracious and uh, consenting as you two guys. Well, are. hey, before we leave, I'll kick you in the shins with my Ariats. <laughs> <laughs> see how you feel about that offering up. <laughs> All right. Enough of you two. What does that say? That's your Insta, right? Yeah, it's the, my Instagram. The Graham. The Graham. Yeah, don't ever let a bad day make you think you have a bad life. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's remember that life is just a snapshot. You know what I mean? It's just it sure a snapshot is. of whatever you're going through is just a snapshot. And I promise you, the Lord is there just looking at you the whole time, just waiting for you to turn to him and, and just want his loving embrace. And, and, you know, it's funny, too, like people talk about you hear a song like from Garth on Answered Prayers and all oh, that yeah. stuff. And that's a great tune. Oh, it's a great tune. And I think about that all the time, because as it relates to Christians, you know, a lot of times we ask for one thing, we don't get it. Yeah. We get something entirely different. And then five, six years, you look back, go, oh, I see what you did, God. Now I see why you wanted it to go that direction and not the direction I was asking for. And it's pretty cool. It's so confusing at Not times, exactly what Garth understand. was talking about, but yeah. Because you don't understand in the moment, you know, what's happening. You're like, why isn't this happening the way I wanted it to or the way that you think it should happen? Right. Because our right. hands are on the wheel, Right. Oh, yeah. Like you Carrie says, there, take your, hands, take off your, your hands off the wheel. Yep. One of my favorite uh, television evangelists, since I'm retired now, I spend uh, probably two hours in the morning watching. Uh, in his Barker lounger with the dog in his lap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're living the good life, brother. <laughs> I watch uh, some uh, Christian shows. And uh, many years ago, a guy that I pheasant hunted with for years and years, we started our we restarted our Christian walk together, mm. and we started listening to cassette tapes of Joyce Myers, mm. and I'm like, man, she's really she's kind of a redneck, uh, had a redneck way of explaining things, but really could explain so that the common man could understand. Right. And one of her sayings was, uh, "You don't ever see the Lord coming, but boy, you know when He's been there." Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. Just kind of reflecting on what you two guys were just talking about. Producer right? Danny, you know what a cassette tape is? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah, I do, and I also have a cassette tape converter. If you need it for your car, you oh. put the cassette tape oh, in and it snap. Plug into your Heck. iPod. Yeah, I got it. This girl's got Thanks. all the tech toys. She's all the toys. Yeah, I bet she ain't got an eight-track converter. <laughs> There's no such thing as an eight-track converter. Right, they gave up on that. Yeah, like, for sure. Bother with that. Yeah. 
Well, Dave, let's talk about music because you you have yeah. hinted a couple times at how music has spoke to you or how the Lord has pushed music oh, yeah. to you. Yeah. But how did that start for you? Like, where did you start to realize that music was something you're interested in or that you had some talent there? Oh, man. Well, where I started getting my passion for music goes all the way back to the second grade. That's the first time that I can remember where I was affected by music in a really deep way. And my great uncle... Was I know that's seven years old because I have a, a, yeah. a daughter that's about to turn seven. Oh, sorry about that, yeah. Yeah, so my great uncle was listening to Louis Armstrong on, oh, a, wow. on an album. Amazing voice. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I was mesmerized by his voice. So I went and sat by my uncle and listened to the whole album. And then my mom got me some videos on him. So I started watching him play, and he's playing with so much passion. He's got all that sweat, and he's wiping his forehead, and it was just so much passion. And I had to write a book report. In second grade, we were supposed to write, like, a three-quarter page and one page, you know, double space, so not even single space book report. Yeah. And I ended up writing four pages on Louis Armstrong. Wow. And I got the gold star, just saying. <laughs> yes! Well, <laughs> but, you're an overachiever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was the beginning of music for me. And so, like, I told you about all the things I did, and all my brothers and sisters did the same things in high school, grade school, and all that. Working? But, um, no, 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 I'm talking about, like, uh, the music, playing instruments, oh, singing, okay. musicals, all that. So it's a musical family. Yeah, very musical family. But for them, it was just something fun to do. But for me, music's always been like breathing. It's always been very, very different for me than the rest of my siblings. If you know me at all, when I got up here, I was cranking in my ears. I mean, I always have my pods in. I'm always listening to music like 24-7. And it's all kinds of music. And all those different musical influences play a role in my songs that I write and, and sing. So Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, It's cool that knowing some of the lyrics to your tunes, obviously, it's cool to see those influences come through in your writing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, my first influence was Louis, and then I remember being, like, uh, I learned to fluctuate my voice listening and singing to uh, Stevie Wonder. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You know, and then, like, then Van Halen, and then all these different groups that were in my head, and, uh, you know, from, like, reggae. My very first single I ever put out, it's got a real reggae vibe to it. I love, and, I, and I'm sorry. Tangled Up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, all great sudden, tune. And I'm wearing a Bob Marley shirt. All yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden, Lynn and I are just... Well, Lynn is a dancer, and she yeah. just got up and she just started dancing. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's a that uh, that song should be a big hit. You know, we released it was the first single I ever released yeah. ever. This is a story how God works, right? So, first single I ever released uh, it goes out through as you know through CDX or Play MPE gets all the country music out to all the radio stations, and one station, one in Long Island, picked it up. Yeah, I remember the story. Yes, yeah, so they picked it up, and then a, an assistant to a syndicated radio show host was going home to see family, heard the song, called her boss, said, you got to hear the song, we got to get on the radio. Boom, that goes out on the radio on his 60 stations, and it slowly made its way across the country, and it was, that was my first top 40 hit, my very first single. And, out um, of one station. And if I had released that now, I bet you it would just be through the roof. If yeah, I, really I bet it would it, be. Yeah, people just love that song. They just love, well, they love that one. It's they a love cool Bullet vibe. Proof. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Well, you, I could just go on naming after act after act that have incorporated a, a reggae song into their, because it mixes so well with country. Yeah. yeah. You know, like Jimmy Buffett. I mean, Jimmy Buffett was always kind of a crossover country guy, and um, people love that sort of thing. Well, especially yeah. Friday because it's hot and we're sitting out there. Oh. We're right on the lake. It was 101 and this, degrees at yeah. showtime. I was hoping you had like three or four of those white V-necks. I'm like, get that this was, guy a change. That was a two-shirt show, man. I'm telling you what. <laughs> yeah. That was hot as sin. I'm like, you poor yeah. guy. <laughs> that was so hot. I'm up there in my jeans and shit. I'm like, just dying. I'm like, what do I wouldn't give to be in a pair of shorts and my cowboy boots? <laughs> some, some flops. <laughs> some flops. You know, yeah. Or just jump in the lake. Oh, dude, I wanted to dive in the lake. I wanted yeah. to dive in the lake so bad. Sayonara in-ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In-ears gone bye-bye, yeah. Uh, yeah, those David, are... How many songs have you written so far? Sorry, oh, Shane. No, boy. you're good. Between it's myself great. and I write a lot with Bridget Tatum, who's phenomenal. She wrote She's Country for Jason Aldean, a bunch of other big hits. And uh, we just vibe really well. I write with other people as well, but she's the one that we just click. Super, super great. She's a great human being. She's a devout Christian. And we write a lot together. And um, 
uh, man, from the beginning with my original writings by myself to mm-hmm. now, I've probably written 80 plus oh, wow. songs. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and I've recorded probably, I've written more than 80, but I've recorded, I think, probably close to 35, 40 songs now. Cool. So, yeah. So, who would you say influenced your, I don't want to say your voice, because you have a very unique voice. I love right. it. Yeah, I love anyone you. that's got a unique, I mean, as you know, Michael Jordan was with us last week. Yeah, yeah. And he's a big yeah. Eric Church guy. Oh, yeah. And Eric's got a very unique sound. Right. And I love your sound, very unique also. Well, that's what helps separate me on radio. You know, I've got that raspy tone. Right now, I'm even more raspy because I've been talking a ton. And Did you have cheese? A... <laughs> what was that? No, I did not have cheese. Just checking. Yeah. But, um, she but... has her own mic back there. I heard that. I'm like, I'm like, Lord. <laughs> Where did that voice come from? God's a woman. That's yeah. God's a woman. God's That's a woman. Say. So anyway, so um, <laughs> I totally thrown off. I don't know where I was going with that now. But anyway, uh, I'm talking a lot. But so I'm naturally raspy. Right now, I'm even more raspy than normal. And uh, but yeah, it's 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 what separates me on the radio, and it really helps me out a lot. It's just got that frosty tone. You oh know yeah. What I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's really cool. People need separation in yeah. their voice. Well, at one point, like a year ago, if a brand new song came out, it could have been one of nine different artists because it sounds exactly the you same. You just yeah. took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. I was just going to say the exact yeah. same thing. So that's really helped and, me a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I think there's a lot of up-and-coming singers that think you just have to be this, like, Gary Lavox from Rascal Flatts vocalist. Right, right, right. No, you don't. You have to write stuff that touches <laughs> people's hearts. Yes. And then you should aim for a unique right. sound. You should be true to yourself. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, if great. you're true to yourself, that will translate in your music. It'll translate in the way you sing it. It'll translate in the way you deliver it. It'll translate in the way it affects people. Yeah. When you're trying to write for some, like I always write things that are shared emotions, shared joy, shared pain, shared stupidity, because I'm kind of an idiot and <laughs> love to laugh and have fun. So I write from these perspectives, you know what I mean? But yeah. I'm always true to myself when I'm writing these songs. You know, and um, and I love the writing process. It's one of my favorite things. I really love writing with Bridget. She's just a joy to write with. It's just the stuff that comes out of her brain is amazing. She's an amazing lyricist. and She's we, been given a gift. Oh, without a doubt. And we just click when we write, and it's pretty cool. So I have a question for you, David. Yes. Um, of all the songs you've written, do, you, do any of them lean towards more traditional country? Yeah, a lot of those haven't made the air. Yeah, a lot of those haven't. I understand made the how Nashville works. Oh yeah, and got to ride the wave. And yes, how, get your surfboard out. You know, yeah. certainly everything evolves and everything changes. And right, uh, there's a lot of people that refer to the new country as bro country, and that's right. because it is bro country. Well, like my stuff is definitely not bro country. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So my stuff is not. Mine is more southern rock country. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But I I've got some stuff that's very traditional. It talks about And I wish I would have known you were coming over at me with a microphone because all of a sudden Shane said, Tom Caddy's coming for you. And I'm like, what? Because <laughs> I couldn't hear anything. He pointed oh, yeah. at you from the stage, and yeah, I was I like, here he comes. It. I didn't see that, and all here of a sudden. Here he comes. Yeah. Well, won't you give me three steps? Give me yeah. three. Well, I know all the words to that song, but right. I didn't know. You froze up because I shocked you. I scared you. <laughs> yeah. But then as soon as you got your bearings, then you were right in there. Yeah. And you just jumped in. That was so much fun. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's that a is... great tune, too. Well, I came to you because I saw you singing the lyrics. I'm like, okay, so when I saw people singing lyrics from different songs, oh. then I'd go to them, you know, and let them jump in on it. And, you know, but that, I got to tell you, that's one of the things that makes my heart super happy. Clearly, I didn't write that one. <laughs> but uh, what iconic song. But um, but when you see people singing your songs, what a gift back that is. It's yeah. just, it's really cool. There was and a I group a of, like, of younger folks that were... Mm-hmm. Off to that, that stage right. Yeah, singing Tangled Up. Yeah. So that is the song, my first song I ever put out, and they love it. I, 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 they post about it all the time. Like I get messages from my social media team saying, hey, that group, or there's this young group, or this young group in this state, or this young group in that. They love that song, and they play it, and they post about it while they're on their boats and this and that. And, but they were singing, like, there's people all across singing different songs that meant something to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Bulletproof. Um, that was an awkward moment because it was a friend of mine that I've known for like 30 years. And uh, she came up to me and she was, had had a few. She goes, oh, it's so you. It just melts me. I just, I just want to, and I'm like, don't say it. 
<laughs> I knew where she was going. Yeah. It's just, but it affects women. Because it's a song about respecting the woman you're with, loving the woman you're with, cherishing the woman you're with. Because if you don't, someone else might. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to add you know that to mean? my special playlist. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And, um, you know, and so each song affects somebody at a different level. And it's really cool when you look out and you see people singing the different songs. And just, it means the world. It's just, That's got to be so that mean, rewarding. Because that means it affected them in some way. Not because I'm happy to sing my song, but because I know that it meant something to them. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That, that, that's the important part. Well, that yeah. is. That's, I've heard that from countless entertainers. Yeah. That's uh, what means the world to them to see people singing their songs and know that it meant something to them. And, you know, it's, they're all the same, whether it's rock and roll or country or blues or mm-hmm. rap or whatever. And I hate to say it, but it seems like it's pretty obvious which musicians are the ones that are just out there trying to, like, fill the bank account. Right. And which ones the ones that are like like you said really f- moved by seeing people touched by the, what they're writing right which is exactly why I've got the no phone in rule oh yeah you know because those guys just come collect the check and leave and it's like wow what the heck what a disappointment you're you know out of here mean? and I never want to be that guy ever. no yeah no you are right I don't line. have it in me your personality and your philosophy is all right in line with so many of the entertainers like. Keith Urban and like so many of these guys, you know, I saw over 35 years, so many of them get in their little huddle and pray before they came on stage. Mm -hmm. Um, So many of them have little signs and stuff, no egos, you know, it's about them. And, you know, that's just the way it is. And you have that philosophy. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know that are listening to our podcast or watching our podcast, they're going to say, what a great guy he is, and I'm going to start listening to his music. And I have a feeling people are going to say, well, I think I already mentioned this, I saw him on that podcast before he right. became really, really famous. Right. And I think that's right. in your future. And I really thank do. you so much for having me on. I can't oh, tell It's you our honor, really, to have you. Now. Seriously, dude, it's so well, you know, it's great. David, it's called Boots and Backstraps, as in oh, Cowboy yeah, Boots. Oh, yeah, buddy. And hunting backstraps. So yeah. Our guests are typically either hunters or country entertainers. A lot of times with you, go hand in hand. With you, we've got both. Synonymous yeah. with each other. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. I was just going to say, um, one of the, uh, I know you're kind of diverging there, but one of the big artists that I'm a huge fan of that's very Christian, very structured in his band with the same philosophy that you use is Josh Turner. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone in the band's... <laughs> He said, Josh, you're like, you're like Josh, yeah. Yeah. Did you, <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, I liked it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a really great dude. I've heard nothing but good things. I've, I've met, it's a very small community, so I've met a lot of the, the artists out there, but I've not met Josh, which is a shame because I, I hear he's a really, really great dude. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that too. I haven't had the chance to meet him personally, but yeah. I know um, having talked to a bunch of people that know him, that they talk about, the fact that the band huddles and prays before every show, yep. and, oh, yeah. and he's got a strict no alcohol consumption policy in the nights of their performances till they're yeah. done, obviously. And right, right. Well, you know, we're so. kind of run the same philosophy, and uh, we even pray at every meal together. So That's every awesome. meal we have together, we pray before every meal, and, um, and we eat as a family. You know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. You know, we hang with each other the whole time we're on the road. So I was gonna say the bus <laughs> and the bus. The bus is hilarious. I get my. Tell you, my crew is funny. Throw these some bus dirt are, around. I want to oh, hear it. Oh, these guys are hilarious. No, I'm not gonna throw any bus dirt around. Just a look. I, I could tell you that. About a little dust, a little bus dust. I could tell you what. One of our guys likes to dust us out now and again. <laughs> it's, it's, that is what I. You know what he's talking about? That's what I'm infinitely crop gra- dust. Yeah, crop oh. dust us. That's what I am infinitely grateful to have my own bedroom in the back of the bus. <laughs> Door shut. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But actually, it's funny because I, I don't have a door shut policy. Like, if I want to crash, like, you know, not having sleep is a killer of every singer's voice. So I do try and really get my good sleep. But I've got, it's an open door policy, of course. And more times than not, like, uh, one of the guys, like, just dying. Like, they're just wiped out i'm like freaking crawl in bro you know just just, gasping i tell you what if you do a leg flop over on me it's over i'm gonna toss you off the bus you're sleeping on the floor yeah. but i'm in the middle of the night that has happened multiple times like dad you know i crashed on the big bed i'm like 
Go ahead, man, whatever. <laughs> Stand your half. <laughs> like, hold on, are you covered with anything? Because you just came from the, the cloud. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Don't bring that crop dust in here, yeah. Like, I can't even imagine you waking up in the morning coming out like, what's going on here? I can't even see. Oh, oh. dude, it's so bad. Who dude. had White Castle last night? <laughs> yeah, the White Castle, not cool. <laughs> we do have a no pooping on the bus rule, though. I'm That's a good you, rule. Yeah, like, you can wait till the gas station. I mean, these buses got to stop every five minutes anyway for fuel. So <laughs> right. like, you can wait. Yeah, yeah. Get about two miles of the gallon on that thing. It's just yeah. like no farting in the booth. Whether that's the this booth yes. or a DJ booth, there's yes. no farting in the booth. Did yes. you have that one, TK? Amen. Uh, a lot of memories just flash through my mind. <laughs> <laughs> a rule that should have been? Is that what you're saying? Should have been a rule? Oh, I've spent a lot of time in a DJ booth. Uh, oh, yeah. Many, many, many years. Oh, yeah. Many, many stories. Oh, I can't even imagine. Oh. Can't even imagine. Yeah. Yeah, you can. <laughs> so, so how did you uh, how did you make the decision once you found that you said you're having a, you got a successful business and you feel like things are going really well? How did you have that decision to just, I mean, other than the Lord pushing you, but where you just say, I'm going to Nashville? Because it's a big difference between, I'm just going to perform locally, regionally. I did not or, go to Nashville right away. Oh, you away. didn't? Well, okay, it's an interesting story because I like it. within a month of, of recording my two demos. Okay. So from the time that I, basically the Lord said, this is what I want you to do. I wrote for about two and a half, three weeks straight. I recorded two demos. And then, literally, we were having our first show ever here in the Twin Cities. Just kind of a, the first thing ever. And I'm like, I'm going to treat this like all my other businesses. I'm going to build a team around it. So I did. I started building a team around it. We started getting cracking. And um, the night of my first show, which was one month after, um, I recorded my first single. I get a call from a buddy of mine. I had talked to him previously. He's a friend. We both have the same friend in the NFL. And he's like, you're not going to believe this, but I'm working for this huge promoter. Boom, 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 boom. So I sent him my stuff. I didn't have the music yet. I sent him my stuff. And, uh, and he says, um, you know, just schedule him three, four months out or whatever as a favor. Because he was the assistant to this guy. Okay. As a favor to you. So the, first, the night of our first show, that morning I sent him my music. So it was one month after recording it. One month and two weeks after starting this journey. Yeah. I got a call by the end of the show, and my buddy's like, holy crap, you just heard your music. He doesn't want to meet you three, four months from now. He wants you here this weekend, or this Thursday. Wow. No, this Saturday, this weekend. And it was Thursday night I was doing the show. So we fly down you know, to meet this guy, and he says, listen, if you're going to do country, you got to meet this guy. His name is Little Ronnie. He didn't tell me who his name was. Okay. It was Little Ronnie Jackson. Okay. He's written number ones for Blake Shelton, Scotty McCreary, Joni Messina, and a ton like Ariana Grande, Bieber, um, Rihanna. Like he's worked with everybody. This guy is like makes beats for the stars, as they say. Okay. Go down to visit. So we drive. So I meet this guy, his boss. We drive to this match, and the gate opens up. We go in. This guy answers the door. He's in flops and shorts and t-shirt. I figure it's his assistant. What ends up being Ronnie? And we start talking and. He's like, check out these beats I just made for Rihanna, you know. And so I'm listening to him, and I'm like, pop, pop, you know. I'm really vibing on it, and and uh, like I'm hitting all the notes, and I'd never heard the music before, you know. And then we start talking about the Lord and what that means to me, and you know, I'm like, anybody that I get involved with, I need to know they're a godly person. And he's like, whoa, he's like, because he's a devout Christian, he's an amazing guy. So before we left, I'm like, yeah, man, he played a song for me. And I said, yeah, I'd really love to drop that with you. I think that'd be really cool. I had no idea who I was dealing with or talking to at the time. No idea. So you, still, you still think it's assistant? No, no, I know it's, it's Ronnie. Now. I, but, know. I don't, but I didn't even know his name. Okay. He just said, if you're going to do country, you've got to meet this guy. You didn't know how tight in he was. Right. So then we get his name. The guy that I went with who's kind of acting as my manager is looking at me all buggy. eyed like, eh, like. He's got multiple Grammys. He's on the Grammy board. He's, like, worked for everybody, you know, like, created stuff for everybody. He's the guy. He's freaking out. I'm bugged out. So when we're leaving, you know, I give him the bro hug. I'm like, man, it was great to meet you, and I'd love to record the song with you, you know? He goes, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll see. Yeah, that'd be cool, you know? So we're leaving, and, like, 15 minutes later, the guy that brought us over there, my buddy's boss, 
says, uh, what the hell happened in your meeting? <laughs> and you guys were hanging out, and I'm like, I don't know, we're just vibing with each other. Is he pissed at me? <laughs> getting to know each other. I'm like, um, he goes, he wants to record that song with you. He wants you back here next week. I'm like, wow, cool. I said, well, just have him send it to me so I can start working it, and I'll be back, you know. And uh, so he goes, he just looks at me like, yeah, you know, right, I'll call him. What I came to find out is that Ronnie gets like 80000 to 100000 per song that he writes and creates the beats for and has never sent a song to anyone without being paid first ever. So he, he calls me back. He's like, honestly, I'm just don't know what the heck just happened. He just shot you the email with the song. Be back next week, Tuesday to record it. So at that time, as you know, he'd... now, and now after that, I found out all these things about Ronnie, all these things. He's like, this guy's just blown away. And then Ronnie and I just, had a real heart to heart. We started working together. We recorded 13 songs together. He gave me an insanely um, discounted rate. He's like, the Lord's just telling me to work with you. I can feel it. And That's what was going through my mind. Yeah. When two Christians get together, things like that will happen. Yep, and, and that was the first song that went top 40. And we're still like dear, dear friends to this day. He's just the most amazing guy. Which song was it? Ah, I was going to I was going to give now him a wait a minute. You can't see cuz he was in the now middle of drinking. I was going to give him a second. <laughs> there's a test there. Cuz what song did I say earlier in the podcast was the very first song I ever released it went top and it was my first top 40 as well. Starts with a T. Tangled up. Tangled up. That's what yeah. I, that was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Ronnie is insanely talented. This guy is sick talented, just crazy and so. Well, if he's got a gate to get into the house. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it was this beautiful mansion with a bridge that went across to a studio building and it's pretty cool. <laughs> Danny, but, can we get a snippet of that song? Yeah, can you yeah, pull that tangled up cuz that would be fantastic. And yeah. I mean, we get to see it live and like, you know, yeah. in the element. And while that's happening, uh, I just a quick question. Uh, I don't see it here, and I don't have mine with me. You have your guitar in the guitar, in the car, I imagine. I did not bring an instrument of any kind uh, because I was not anticipating playing. And truth be told, I'm a very it's weak. Too hot. Guitar, I'm a very weak guitar player. I'll no. be straight with you on that. I can George straight it. I do play my guitar in every show. I, I play basic chords, uh-huh. but I couldn't do it justice. Not like my guitar player could. Okay. Yeah, but. We'll let Plus, you, you can slide. hear my voice, bro. That was very humble I'm of you. I'm dying right now. That was very humble of you to say that, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the truth. I, everything, I, everything I say, everything I do is real. Yeah. You know, and that's the reality of it is I do George Strait. I get on my electric guitar and just crank away in a couple songs. But Your guitar would be pretty basic. warped by now if we're sitting out there in that Oh, heat. yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Soft as a summer breeze. Had I get so lucky. You could have been crowned Miss World Take those story about this down video. home country girl You got some pretty eyes I love the way your jeans hug your thighs Damn, I'm glad it's all mine, all mine Every time I'm gone I miss ya I can't wait to get home and kiss ya Run my fingers through your hair Show you how much I care So when you started this tune last weekend, yeah, there was like, that's I think I was looking song. to the other end of the table, which is away from your that's that immediate yeah. stage left, yeah. And I saw this like kind of like commotion, and I look over, and it's like this whole crowd of people jumped up and ran over by that side of the stage, yeah. and they're all dancing, and they got their drinks in the air. I was yeah. like, whoa, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that you know, was awesome. Unfortunately, they have a very very small small sound system there. Yeah, yes. you know it's on Lake oh. Minnetonka and. They have uh, you noise, know, noise regulations, and yeah. uh, that sound system did not do. It was horrible. Because I was just yeah. hypnotized by that right there. Yeah. And with that little sound system in your band, I'm like, that's a good song. You know, it was. Um, I was fixated on watching you jump around up there. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was. Um, yeah, the sound system was horrible, so I had to really over, way over sing. Yep, yep, yep. And, uh, you know, because of the feedback I was getting from the front, 
right. front of the house. And he's like, Dave, he's like, you're so much bigger than the sound system. I know. And he's like, I'm sorry. I gave you everything I could, but you just had to sing through it. And, you know. So. Yeah, the poor FOH guy. He's sitting well, on the stairwell in front of us. Well, Shannon yeah. and I are, you know, yeah. familiar with uh, microphones and how the systems mm. work. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's some sound system. Even when I introduced you that night. Yeah. I'm like. You had right, to talk I, loud. I had to talk yeah. loud. Yeah. yeah. To make it work. And yeah. Yeah, so it was just uh, one of those days. It was yeah. just, you know, but it's but okay. But everyone had fun, and everybody it came had, off well. Yeah, everybody had fun. I guess the sound to the right was really good, like to oh, right good. of stage. Right. Because they had speakers running through that whole area, and I guess oh. that was much better on that side than on this side. But still, I had to sing my brains out. So, well, yeah. everyone had fun. Yeah. I know we had fun. Matt had a ball. It's the first time the so, wife and I have been on a, like a legit date night. I don't even know how long, and she oh, was having really? an Everybody. amazing time. Oh, that's great, man! Can that's you imagine awesome. the amount of people that were out there for the first time since oh, yeah. COVID? It was packed. Mass? Every table was full. The bay was filled with boats. Yep. And it was a good crowd. It was a fun crowd. And uh, but the, so the woman in that video, yeah, right. So we had casted two people to play the role of the farmhand and the girl in love. Yep. Right. And I met him, and I'm like, no way this is going to come off as authentic. And while we were at the restaurant where we were having a discussion of the storyboard for the video, there's this girl singing country behind the bar, just to herself. So hold on, before you get to that, yeah. what, what was it about the vibe that you thought was not going like, to come off the way you wanted so it to? So completely unauthentic. This girl was not country at all. Okay. And neither was this guy. What it came guy, off like an actor hired oh, for yeah, IBM. It would have been, right. been, been gross. It would have okay. been awful. I would have cool. been so sad. It's good that you felt that, you know? Yeah. And so I see this girl behind the bar. I had seen clips of the two. I had not physically met them. So I see this girl behind the bar and she's singing. And she's kind of dancing back there. I'm like, this girl right here is true blue country. So I walked up to her. I said, hey, let me ask you. Said, and I said, and this is legit. I said, how would you feel about being in my, my music video tomorrow as the lead female? She goes, are you serious right now? Because she just got into Nashville to, uh, to work on her career, her music career. And she's making drinks. Yeah, she's making to drinks. To pay the bills. Yep. I said, I'm dead serious. Mm-hmm. I think you've got a great vibe. I think you're true blue country. You can tell by the way she dressed and moved and interacted and whatnot. And, uh, and then I called the rancher where we were at, and I said, your ranch in that works for you, the one I met. I said, how would you feel about being in the video? And he's like, oh, my gosh, I think you'd love it. He's kind of a little bit on the quiet side. I'm like, perfect. That's the exactly hat's a dead giveaway, too. Yeah, yeah, right? And I'm like, that's exactly what I want, but I'm looking for authentic. And so when we got there that morning, I said, I want you two to spend every waking moment together. This whole video, I said, I want you to, to start building some reports, get to know each other and whatnot. By the end of the day, they were legitimately falling for each other. Ah, whoa. They ended, up, they ended up dating for like four or five months after that. Ah. No way. <laughs> yeah, well, that scene right there. So I'm like, you're not jumping into his arms. I said, come run at me. Jump into my arms right now. As hard as you can. She did it. I'm like, that's what I want. I said, he will catch you. And so, and so then they redid it with him in the scene. And uh, it was awesome, man. It was so great. This kid is a super nice kid. I'm still amazing friends with both of them, and they're just sweet people. The people that own that ranch are two amazing Christian, uh, amazing Christian couple. They're super duper awesome, and uh, I, I'm I'm really good friends with them as well. Are there any turkeys sure. on that ranch? Oh, oh man! Yes. There is some I love how your brain works. Serious turkeys on that ranch. Let me tell you, it's like it's like oh my god. I'm sorry, country oh. music is a big part of my life, but. I'm always looking for an end. Oh, before yeah. we, yeah, <laughs> totally. Before we go any further, I'm going to drive a stake in that one, and it's going right. to be a ribeye. So we're going to oh, take a little yeah. break to keep the all lights right. on around here. All right, all right. So promote sponsorship. And, uh, Dave, when we come back, we're going to talk about your tour, like kind of yep. what's been going on through the beer virus yep, yep. and what's going to be happening this year, what you got on the horizon so f- fans cool. can like be tuning into all oh, that. Oh, yeah, for sure. And yeah, then we're thank you. definitely digging into all the hunting stuff because I know you're super passionate oh, about the outdoors. Oh, you don't even know. And Tom is literally like a little kid. Like, you think he has gas? No, he's just excited to talk to you about hunting. Oh, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a freak about hunting, so that'll be, that'll be plenty good for me. Anytime I can spend outdoors, that's 90% of it for me, just being outside in the yeah. wilderness and this beauty that God gave us, and then, of course, the pursuit of, of big, beautiful animals. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I'll add another one component to that. Being out in God's great wilderness, yep. 
maybe scoring on an animal, which is yep. the icing on the Bonus. cake. Bonus, yeah. But for me, and not necessarily everybody, the camaraderie. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people oh, yeah. that like solitary hunting, and mm-hmm. I understand that. That's not me. I like hanging out with Shane and some <laughs> of the other guys that I hunt with and telling stories and having a beer after you come out of the field. This is a very interesting segue when we come back. Because when Are you going to tease? Because when, we, when I start talking to the sportsmen's channel about it, and I'm so gracious that they're allowing me to do this show with them and, and that they're working with me on this, um, that that's exactly what I said to them. I said, a lot of these shows are super intense, and they're all about, like, oh, yeah, you know, these are the 12 animals, you know. And that's not my vibe. And right. it's cool that it's their vibe, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right, it's right. totally cool. But for me, it's about the time spent with the people you care about and other sportsmen and the fun yep. of being out in, the, out in the outdoors together and all the screwball stuff that happens <laughs> when you're out there hunting and fishing. And, uh, and so that's why it's called Hang Time with Dave Mackworth because it's about that time we spend hanging out together and laughing and having a good time that makes it so special for me. Right, right. And so, like, my whole... That's a good title. Oh, yeah. And so my whole show is, is like, celebrity buddies of mine from the sporting world, the music world, uh, other people of note, um, uh, you know, veterans. It's just, you know, it's, just, it's about that time spent together just hanging out and laughing and... Excuse me. That beer guy. Yeah. Well, I had, like, a mini little burp, I think. <laughs> Hopefully I was far enough away from the mic when that But anyway... Um, if that's what the we should put a duck quack shows. right there in post. <laughs> <laughs> What's the golfer's name? Uh, Bubba Watson. Bubba, Bubba Watson. No, not Bubba Watson. Uh, he's a uh, and is it Bubba? Uh, he's from the. He says he's a pro golfer. You see him on the tour once in a while yeah. because he only golfs to support his hunting habit. <laughs> uh, I know you know he is. Sometimes oh. he, he would get caught wearing the Bubba teeth. Oh, oh, um, I thought it was, it's a... going to come to us before we're done with break. Yep. I know it, we'll but, it uh, it. but it, we'll talk a little bit more about the hunting and fishing show. Yeah, we yeah, will man. for sure. So folks, empty your bladders, refill your drinks. We'll be right back with more Dave McElroy. Boots and backstraps is proudly brought to you by homes by Shane. Making your move with the Homes by Shane team means an unparalleled customer service experience. That level of service is the foundation of this REMAX Results referral-based business. Our driven team of experts communicate with their clients every step of the way, ensuring a memorable experience from the first conversation through your closing day. Go to homesbyshane.com for more information. Let's get you home. If you would like to sponsor the Boots and Backstraps podcast or you have an interest in joining our team, Send us an email to Boots and Backstraps Podcast at gmail.com. Welcome back to the podcast, folks. We are still in studio with Dave McElroy and, of course, my illustrious co host, Tom Cat. How are you doing, sir? Come on now. How are you doing, Dave? <laughs> Wonderful. So, a little bit of a break there to uh, plug our sponsors because we got to keep the lights on and keep this thing rolling and so the sponsors are very important as i teased before the break and as you were talking about we want to get into kind of how you got through 2020 you know keeping the 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 machine rolling right what's going on with 2021 and then what you have on the horizon whether that be the tour or whether you got lp that's going to be coming out like all that kind of thing okay so well 2020 was was difficult of course yeah you know and for everybody um, I was booked from April 12th through to October 20th, all but three weekends that I had asked to, to keep clean and uh, for family stuff. And um, so that's three to four shows a weekend, plus some middle of the week stuff. And it was a great season. All of it got canceled, but three shows. So I'm going to see if I can do something different here. Hold on a minute so I can look at you. I'm just going to shift. So, um, but anyway, uh, You know, so that was a bummer. But you know what? A lot of people went through a lot of things. And I was just, I was so blessed to be able to see all the positive things that were happening um, out there. Like, you know, you see families together walking around and enjoying themselves and playing and going for walks outside. And they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have electronics. They had each other. And there's so many great things that happened during this thing that I just chose to look at all the positive things. And, 
One of the positive things that came out of this was, uh, you know, being able to take the time to build the show with the Sportsman's Channel and uh, and get that rolling. And so now I get to, to do that, which is great. It gave me time to um, just put a lot of things in place that I need to get in place, you know, structurally for the music and everything. And yeah. in conjunction with the label and all that fun business. And uh, now this year, it's like we're going into it, but people are still a little tentative. <laughs> so, like, like, I think... A lot of the booking agencies are looking at June as the test. So, like, if you look at everybody's tours, July is pretty well open on a lot of tour schedules. They're they're testing in June, and if June goes well, then they're going to start stacking July, August, September, October. And what does your June look like? How many dates do you have? Uh, I've got six more dates, I think, in June, and then uh, a couple charity events on top of that. Okay. And then, so our June is pretty decent. It's not great, but it's good. Yeah. We've already had three shows. I think we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shows, eight more shows, and then two charity events. Um, and then uh, July for us is looking good. August is looking good. September, October, we're looking great. We've even got stuff into the new year already booked, which is really cool. And uh, so we've been lucky that our booking agency stayed on top of it. I've got a bunch of contacts from – my side that we've been able to bring in some really great dates and so it's been pretty fun it's great. been really fun and so we're looking for a huge 2021 um we're gonna talk about my show in a little bit but um uh i was able to already get seven of those hunts done and in the can and now this fall we're gonna do six more uh we're, yeah well we've got some in the end of july beginning of september and then the rest october out October, November, December. So we gotta talk about a way to get a little boots and backstraps twist on that. Yeah. Work that out. Oh yeah, we'll figure that out for sure. That'd be super fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. TK. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Let's do it. Maybe we have you guys on an episode. That would be fantastic. How killer would that be? That'd be no, fun. That would be we would so love it. Fun. Yeah. We'd be honored to be your guest. Yeah. Absolutely. So oh, and you asked about a new single. We've got my very my new single Vibin comes out the first week of July. All right. And my current single is uh, top 20 right now. And yep. July, the new single, that's uh, Let It Flow. The new single comes out in uh, July, and uh, that'll carry us through into the fall. And and the one that's out right now, that's the trucker hat? No, no. The one that's out right now is Let It Flow. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, Let It Flow is out right now. And uh, then Vibin, the trucker hat was the song before that. And okay. then Vibin is the next song. So uh, really excited about it. Like I just, I just love your laid back approach, man. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's just super fun. And so we're really, really excited about Vibin. It's just, it's basically a song that gives everybody permission to have fun again. The opening line is, uh, put your sunglasses on, stay the hell with it. Had enough of the bad stuff. Want to get the good, got to get it. Got a cooler and a blanket yes. and a little bit of rock and roll. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like it stays like this and feel real good for the soul. That's how it starts out. So that's fantastic. Uh, you know, it just gives people permission, and we didn't plan it that way. It just turned out that this is the song we're releasing after COVID ended, and so that's funny. That's what the Rowdy Cowboy Show used to be. It used to be a show that gave permission for yeah. people to let their hair down and get crazy. Yeah, and that's what it did. That's what it did. that's what it was for thirty five years. Yeah, people need that awesome. in their lives, right? What's that? People need that in their lives. They do. They, they need do. to. They need to see each other again. They need to experience life again. They need to interact again. They need to just go. Ah, I'm just going to go have a day out on the boat, or I'm going to go out in the woods, or I'm going to go for a hike, or I'm going to do whatever the heck it is that makes me feel relaxed and feel good, and you know, spend some time with people I care about and that yep. kind of thing. So, yeah. Dave, before we get into hunting. Danny, yeah. if you would, maybe you could throw up a little snippet of uh, Trucker Hat. Uh, we would be remiss if we didn't. Or let it flow. Do you, know, do you know that we filmed Trucker Hat right here in Minnesota? Where was it? Uh, we filmed it on a farm, friends of mine farm in uh, Farmington, Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, That's where I grew up hunting, Farmington. You know, we got Viking great Chad Greenway in this video, too. He's a good buddy of mine. It's a beautiful combine. Isn't that? This little John Deere. I was driving that combine, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm a little farm boy, you know. Is that a, a Grey Duck Vodka hat, brother? It is, because I was helping my brothers out at Grey Duck Vodka. Yes. Uh, three of those boys are from Lakeville, and uh, Chad Greenway, of course, is the face and one of the owners of Grey Duck, and he's a good buddy, and oh. so wherever I can, I try and throw them into my stuff and give them a little support. I guarantee you, Dave, I killed roosters. 
real close to that property. You probably did. So I promise you. Chad was like in the group there. Uh, if you go to the very end of the video, uh, the um, the last scene in the music video, if you can fast forward, there he's right there with the big belly bump. The sleeveless. I love it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm going sleeveless. I'm like, yeah, boy. Because, you know, he's a South Dakota farm boy. He grew yes, up on the farm. Is. and yeah. Just yeah. a heck of a great dude, man. Just a really good guy. So. He's really short, too. I remember when he first yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember when he first came in the league and that he hurt his knee literally the preseason of his first year. Yeah. Rookie year. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, I loved watching him at Iowa. I was like, oh, yeah. He was awesome. Just a beast. And I think I might even have been at that game. And he got, it was a special teams tackle he got hurt on. Right. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, no. And then he came back the next year. And of course, he had a great career. Oh, he had an amazing career. And he's just a good human being. Amazing human being. Yeah. And his wife is too. You talk about good Christian people. These guys are really, they are a team. Those two. Super philanthropic. Oh, super philanthropic and uh, deep love for their children. They devote all their time and energy into their marriage and their children, and they're just awesome. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, really, really good people. Super good people. Cause that's good people to know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a good buddy for sure. It's awesome. So, Danny, do we have that picture of that brown bear? It's not a brown bear. It's a black bear. It's a brown color phase. Yeah. That... Uh, I don't know if you have that picture or not. I thought you did. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you did. You shot that last week in Idaho. There yeah, about a week and a half ago, we shot that Man, in Idaho. That's, that's a beautiful bear. Yeah, yeah. That is a beauty. Isn't that cool? I've only killed, uh, actually, the color phase that I did kill was similar to that, and that's the only color phase that I ever did kill. Yeah. And for those of you that aren't aware, black bears come in uh, about four or five different colors. They come in, obviously, black, chocolate, cinnamon blonde and have you ever heard of the silver bear silver bear Up yep in british columbia yeah yeah yep next so that uh the gentleman right there is johnny parker he's my nephew and uh he shot that bear we shot it together and he um you know he's a iraqi veteran he graduated college had great job offers and he's like you know what i just really feel the need to serve my country nice. first so he did he enlisted, went and served his country, came back, became a police officer, and he's a canine now, a canine police wow. officer. Good for Just him. given a life of service, and I said, listen, we may only get one opportunity in a bear, so if we get one, it's yours. Yeah. And so he shot that bear, and it, nice. was, it was such a great experience being able to share that with him. He's an avid, avid outdoorsman, so... To be able to be out there with him was pretty awesome experience for me. You know, a massive you head on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was just under bear. seven feet. So oh, it, it was really? A, yeah, it was a big boy. Yeah. Wow, that is a big black bear. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, it was no, it was no joke. Yeah. You know, you touched on a topic about uh, he had all his options in his life and he chose to enlist. I just saw the documentary. Help me out here. I'm drawing a blank. Oh, on uh, uh, the football, the football player. player um, uh, like so Pat Tillman. Yep. Yeah, Tillman. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I you know, is that amazing? I kind of consider myself sort of a macho guy, but I certainly shed a lot of tears watching that documentary. As he takes oh, his yeah. readers, uh, takes his readers off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a yeah. Lot yeah us, seriously, a lot of us are familiar with the story, but I when I heard the, all of the details, and I you know what I and I think about this a lot. Pat Tillman did what. You know, the people used to do, like, whether it was a, an actor, uh, Elvis Presley, yeah. or, or any, they all enlisted. Mm -hmm. And when's the last time you heard of a celebrity, uh, whether it be music, whether it be an sports actor or, or an actor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. None of them. Here, Pat Tillman just oh, man. Certain, yeah. paid the ultimate price. Right. I mean, guys like John Wayne, Jimmy Stewart, I mean, the list goes on, and Elvis. Yeah. The list goes on and on. They all served, and nobody does that anymore. No, nobody it, does that it's, anymore. It's pretty cool. It's a really, really cool story. I haven't seen the documentary. Where did you see that? On uh, one of the. T uh, I'd like to watch probably Netflix or something. No, it was on uh, regular satellite. Okay. Um, it, I'd like to see it. That's it was. It. Yeah. Well, it was on one of the sports channels. It wasn't oh, it was one of those thirty for thirty deals. Or yeah, something. Danny, can you look that up? Should yeah, one of those thirty. For I'd like to there. see that. That'd be you yeah. Know, yeah, can you get on the your googly machine? <laughs> hit, hit the old you interweb. Didn't, you didn't yeah, hit like the interweb uh, and ship that ways. out to us, would you please? Ah, did you ah. just quote? Did you just quote? Uh, 
Oh, what movie is that? Zoolander. Uh, Zoolander. Yeah. Did you like my you googly? I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie. <laughs> That's a great. <laughs> the information is in the computer. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good stuff. Oh. Uh, she'll have that shipped out to us here in a minute. Yeah. So was hunting something you got started in when you were young? Is it something you picked up as you got older? Like, how did you get involved in the no, outdoors? No, I was pretty young. It was weird, too, He's because... a farm boy. Yeah, but you know what's funny? My dad didn't hunt. Oh, really? My two brothers didn't hunt. And I had this deep, deep, deep desire to hunt. Like, something that was just inside of me. And, uh, and so I learned on my own, and I learned from my uncles. My uncles on my mom's side would take me out hunting. They were avid, avid hunters from northern Minnesota. And they would take me out hunting. So from an early age, I learned to hunt. And uh, it's just something that has been a constant source of peace for me. Oh, yeah. You know, I just spend that time out there, and, and I just feel my blood pressure come down. And um, I find myself praying as Catholic. She'll find this funny. But I have shot, I shot four of my biggest be- or deer ever while praying the rosary. Giddy up. Yep, like I'll be Fantastic. sitting in the stand in the early part of the morning, and I'm waiting for sun to come up, and so I just start praying my rosary. And as the sun comes up, I see you know everything out, you know the woods coming alive, and you're you got your those 40th ice, Hail yeah. Mary. <laughs> yeah, you got the ice crystals. Yeah, you got the ice crystals coming up, and the woods starts to come alive, and all of a sudden out comes a big beautiful buck, and boom. Dave, I can't tell you. Yeah. Every time I'm on stand, I always pull out the rosary and I say the yep, rosary. Same. I'm so happy that we're, uh, and I know Shane's the same way. Uh, I'm so happy that we're talking so much about our faith. And, and rosary faith. in the car It's different. Right now. It's different for me to be able to do that. And so I'm really enjoying being able to talk about my faith so much with you guys yeah. because I know you're, you're my brethren in that. And whether we're Catholics or not, I mean, right. I'm obviously Catholic. You're Catholic. You're Catholic. And so our faith is a little different than some other Christians. But it's all the same faith. We all Absolutely. believe. As long as you believe in Jesus Christ, yeah. you're on your way. Yeah. I'll take, uh, if I'm up in a tree and I don't have an actual, I'll take little twigs. Oh. And then I'll use my fingers. I use my fingers. I count. And then yeah, I'll yeah. have uh, four twigs, and I'll throw them away. And after the fourth one, I say one more decade, and yeah. bang. There you go. That works. <laughs> you know but, what? That, that but might I've, not yeah. be a secret weapon for everybody, but yeah. It, yeah. It oh, there it is, Pat Tillman. All right. It's actually free on YouTube. Oh, right on. Yeah. Good to know everybody. Yeah, I'm going to watch that tonight before I go to bed. That's pretty cool. That guy, Six man. Six an hour and a half. What a rock star yep. he was. Yeah, he was a Just beast of an athlete. Stud. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, and, and to go back to what you said, he gave up a very promising professional career to go serve our country. Yeah, he yeah. was making big money with the Cardinals. Yep. And, uh, and then he had an opportunity to play for the Cowboys when he came back, but he decided to go back one more tour. Yep. And he probably felt called to do so. Yeah. Nobody really knows for sure. The documentary at the end says, you know, may have been friendly fire that killed him. Mm. Uh, they don't know that happens. Um, right. However it happened, it was a travesty, a tragedy that yeah. we lost such a great Christian what a hero. human being. It yeah. You know what, though? It's all in God's plan. He yep. calls us home when we're supposed to go home. And yep. look, we're still talking about him now in his witness. Yep. Yeah, right. You right. Bet. So, yeah. Right on. Boy, I'd encourage anybody to pull up on YouTube or wherever to watch that story on Pat Tillman. Yeah, I'll, I'll be watching it tonight before I crash. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Anywho, uh, yeah. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you had uncles, and they got you a bit. You got it in oh, your yeah. blood a little bit. You're oh, chasing yeah. whitetails in Minnesota. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, and you want to know something funny. So I'm, I'm left eye dominant. Okay. But the first bow I got was a hand-me-down bow that was right, sure. right eye. So... I just, I'm ambidextrous, so I, I oh, can, oh, great. yeah, so I write, eat, cut all that left-handed, but I play almost all my sports right-handed, Really? but I had to train my eye. I had to shut my sure. left eye, so my right eye, and I started bow hunting with a right-handed bow until I had amassed enough money to buy myself a nice Matthews and a left-handed Matthews bow, and, um, uh, you know, and then I've been obviously hunting with my left-handed bow ever since. But even a lot of my guns in the beginning were that way, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? You shoot what you have. You know, I didn't grow up rich. You right. know what I mean? And so, um, but I had a desire to be out there. And so I used what I had and everything I pointed it at went down. So, you know. Yeah. I've been shooting Bowtech for the last half dozen years. And I'm like getting this close to switching over to the Hoyt family. Oh, I tell you what. Those V-series bows that just came out with, I was like, oh. 
True being life. as being as we're good Christian guys, I'm going to lay this knowledge on you. And Do that. This is something I found out recently while on radio station tour that. Um, Look at that scape behind you. Oh, dude, you don't even know. Everywhere I turned in Idaho was an even more beautiful vista. Like, it was just. I hear you. Everywhere I turned around, I'm like, unbelievable. Um, I just, my heart was so happy. I, Danny, go no into the hard drive that. and grab that mountain from last fall with me yeah. sitting on the edge of the cliff. Yeah. It's a video, a little video clip. But go ahead. There's no way to describe it. But anyway, so Matthew's bows, um, they're very, very. Big Christians. Big Christians. Big time. And a massive amount of their money goes to charity. A massive amount. Really? Like, like to the, like, because they also have one of the best guitars made. Right. Right. And so, seriously, I can't even tell you the millions and millions they spend on charity. That's their focus. They All right. So, that's their focus. I, I'm telling you. I guess you, I got to go try out a couple of Matthews. I'm telling you. Well, you won't be disappointed. They're so quiet and so fast, dude. It's crazy. The, the knock on yeah. Matthews is just like picking up a I beam. <laughs> No, it's not, man. They're, theirs are so much lighter than you think. Okay. And I didn't strike as a guy that couldn't handle a little ah, weight. I, <laughs> I deserve that. I opened the door for it. Well played, sir. Well played. That's awesome. No, but it's... So you uh, push-ups before I go now. I, I t- <laughs> <laughs> Sit on my back so he doesn't think I'm a wimp. Sit on my back. I can do this. No, they, uh, no, they make an insanely great bow, man. I'm telling you what. It's, so it's, you shoot Matthews, obviously. It's smooth, and it is wicked quiet. Quiet and it is wicked fast. Do you have a Matthew sponsorship yet? I do not. You I don't need one, bro. I do not need one. I I I I don't want them spending a dime and they put it toward the charities. I'll get it from somewhere else. Yeah, but who else to spread their message than you, who truly believes in their cause? Yeah, I, I agree. But you know, I'm, I'm, that's not why I shared. You're that. Hum- he's a humble guy. That's he's why humble. I shared that. But yeah, they donate. He shoots Matthews, by the way. And hundreds of bows to youth organizations. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. they're very generous. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and they're stout Christian. I've had the pleasure of meeting the Matthew family. Oh, and, you have? Oh, yeah. I have not. I've been there a few times. Have not. I've been there and took the tour a couple times with my guys and had not had the, uh, had, not had the pleasure of meeting them. But, um, yeah, Wait. it's pretty cool. No, that's not the one I was thinking of. That's still neat, though. That's all it's one where the very beginning of the video is just my face smiling, and then I flip the camera around. I'm on the edge of a cliff in Montana. Yeah. Oh, wow. We were black bear hunting yeah. up, in, up in Grizz country, oh. and we were quite a ways back in. We were sitting at this uh, uh, meadow that mm-hmm. spilled back a, probably another five miles into, like, a chain of meadows. Wow. And it, the wind was real high, so we were what just kind of doing some glass. After? Black bear. Oh, nice. Yeah, black bear. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking a second ago. So my my bow tech is a Realm X. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the one. Oh, I shoot it's now. a great bow. I'm not slamming on them either. I'm, oh you know, no, you a, can't a slam Hoyer, any yeah. bow these days. No, you, because they're all so good. Hoyt, Matthews, yeah. bow tech. I mean, the list goes on. The technology is quality. You, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever you like. Yeah, whatever, whatever you're comfortable means, with. Yeah, and as long as you get out mm-hmm. and practice with it, yeah. you're going to have the state it, of the art equipment. And you want to know something funny? Mine is probably. 11 generations old oh, wow. Wow. maybe and i i'm one of those guys Uses i'm shooting the got. same 30 odd six yeah. that i've been using since i was 18 years old when i bought it yep. and i put a nikon scope on it i've been using that darn thing ever since because it, it works i'm an old dog right i'm a faithful dog like italian irish you know where you start with what you finish with but you know and i've got an i've got all kinds of guns man and i've got you know, 300 short mags, and I've got all kinds of other things. And I use that when I go out west. But if I'm up north deer hunting in Wisconsin or Minnesota, I got my 30 odd six sure. with me because that's my Minnesota and, North, and Wisconsin yep. gun. And uh, Remington 7400, yep. you know, and uh, when it comes to bow hunting, everything I've ever pointed that thing at has gone down, so why switch? Right. You know, I don't need 350. 10 miles an hour, you know, <laughs> feet, per, feet per second. Yes. When I got 295 per second, and it's going to smack it down. So, you know, God, you it's going to give it a good-sized dirt nap, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've had four yeah. different Matthews, and I don't recall. I don't even know what the one I have now. It's only two or three years old. Yeah. Uh, Shoots real nice, though. I yeah, shot well, do, you, do you know what the, the name of the bow is you have now that you've had? Switchback. Switchback. Yeah, I yeah. have a switchback. Yeah. Everybody had a switchback. Right, they're exactly. great bows. Yeah, they're so solid, man. And yeah. every year you pull it out, I've had it restrung yeah. once or twice, sure. I think. And yep. things money every time. Wherever I point it, it's, it's over. You bet. Danny, yeah. did you find that video? No, not yet. 
It's in the hard drive. I got a, I got a picture of your face. <laughs> I shipped it to you. You should have it. Ship that out here to us, would you? Yeah. yeah. yeah they give me grief about the things that I say because I'm older than they are. No, nope, that's not it. <laughs> well, that's a fun picture. That was a turkey hunt in the Badlands. Joe Bazooka. That was oh, in the Badlands? Badlands. Yeah, yeah he took me out there in a, on my first turkey hunt, and we didn't see or hear a single turkey. <laughs> it yeah. happens. Oh, we saw one. That's why it's called hunting. It's not called harvesting. No, it's called hunting. It happens that. sometimes. Black Hills you used to that. have turkeys everywhere. We hunted oh, yeah. there for years. Yeah. And because of the bobcat population. The oh, right. The only, the only turkeys you'll find in the Black Hills anymore are in people's backyards that are feeding them. In the development. Right. Tom Glines is going to be on one of our future shows. He's oh, the cool. regional director for the yeah. Turkey Federation. Oh, sure. Right and I called him up. Tom, where are all the turkeys? Yeah. It's, it's something weird going on. That's for, mm-hmm. uh, that's a conversation. It happens. When Tom's going, there's, there's something going on in Wisconsin. Yeah. There's something going on in Missouri. And I go, you know, I used to hunt eight well, different Well, in Minnesota, states. here in Minnesota, I mean, the, the, the timber population is crazy. Cold. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I had a buddy of mine that the population of Timberwolves was so high that he shot a small buck and went in to eat, field dressed it, went in to eat. When he came back, the pile was gone. Gone. Gone, gone by the time he came back for the afternoon yep. hunt. So, I mean, it's like that's how many there are in some areas of the state, but um, I bumped into a couple where I hunt, and uh, my favorite spot up in the North Shore. And um, one time, I was like, I, I always have really great success opening morning up on the North Shore where really? I hunt. Yeah, like every year I get a nice 10-point or better opening morning, and there was not a thing <laughs> moving. Like, there was nothing, not a doe, not a anything. And uh, also, an ambulance went by about 1,000 yards from my stand. Wee, 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 you know? Yeah. And all of a sudden, about 150 yards out in front of me, oh, starts calling out to the Whoa. ambulance. I'm like, well, that explains that. That's why I didn't see anything <laughs> today. And and then another time, I was walking out. I was kind of still hunting my way out from the stand to grab some quick something to eat. And I'm a huge freak for scent control. So at, at midday, if it's a warm day, I'll go back, kind of re-wash up. Dip re- yourself in again? <laughs> yeah, I just re-shower up, put on no scent deodorant, no scent, soap my hair, all that kind of stuff. You had to use a scent shield, right, Tom? Yep, and I'll, and I'll, right. Yep, and I'll wear completely new clothes that I've got in my scent, scent, li- scent sure. free bags, go back out. So I was still hunting my way out in here. You know, oh, I turn around thinking maybe it's a deer sneaking up by me. And it was a big old timber wolf, gorgeous white and tan timber wolf. He's walking right toward me, and now he's at about 30 yards. Now he's at about 20 yards. So I lift up my gun. I'm like, it takes one more step. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I gave him a warning. I went, you know, I just gave him a, you know, it's a little, little noise. And he looks up, sees me, just turns around, yeah. takes off the other way. And he's probably thinking about his girlfriend or something. It wasn't paying right. any attention to you. He wasn't paying any attention to me. It's breeding season for them too, you know. Yeah. The noise yeah. you just made, he might have been thinking about a ham dinner. <laughs> <laughs> right you are the only guy i've ever heard say that they have great success on the north shore because yeah. i know lots of people that hunt mm-hmm. up there and they'll hunt for two weeks and never see a deer oh yeah all they see is wolves yep there's uh, there's different spots that are really bad and you know if you get lucky enough where you get one of the uh the the first snows of the year those lake effect snows yeah what it does it it the war the water is so warm off lake superior that it pushes it up Right. And it hits about five to ten miles inland, and they'll get like ten inches to a foot, and then all the deer drop down to where I'm at, down oh, down right. down on the lower side. They'll all head for, you know, warmer weather and, and things they can still eat off the ground. And so, oh, uh, there's me feather hunting in South Dakota. That's my deal. Yeah, that's my truck. Oh. Is that an over-under? Uh, it is. Nice. It is. It's a Rosini over-under, and that thing shoots smooth as silk, man. I'm telling you what. I think that thing is like butter. It's so light that to carry. It looks like the truck you drove tonight. It is the truck I drove tonight. That's a three-quarter ton? Uh, three-quarter ton heavy-duty Chevy. Yeah, diesel, crew cab. Oh, I saw the uh, bow tie when I pulled up. Yeah, buddy. I'm a Chevy guy. I've been a Chevy guy my whole life. I mean, literally every vehicle I've ever owned is a Chevy. Can I ask you, how did you get a California IA plate? Don't even. <laughs> no, I, I ended up doing uh, some... Uh, some advertisement for that i was like registration on that thing must be about four grand (laughs) yeah man well it's funny because i know it's funny because they um 
I've got a lot of listenership. I got a lot of followers out in California, and there's a dealership that really wanted me to promote their their dealership. So I did a commercial for them, a few radio spots, and nice. Then they they took a massive amount off that truck, so it made oh, it made cool, it worth man. Well. Yeah, nice. so that's pretty cool. Do you want to give him a shout out? You can. Shout out to John Sullivan Chevrolet. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we love to give a little love for the people that helped us oh, out. Oh yeah, right? we've got a lot of really cool people that have helped us out along the way, which is really cool. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. Yeah yeah yeah. This has so, been so much fun. In the mountains, mm-hmm. you obviously you're, you're going after some bear there. Yeah, I'm going back to that basic same area for mountain lion in just a couple Ooh. months. So getting after one of those big bad boys. Now, That's there's on his a bucket critter list. I've never. Uh, that was always on my bucket list. Mm-hmm. I know some uh, hound uh, guides out there, but I've yep. never been able to put it together. Well, you need me to put it together for you. Let me know, and we'll get it done. I know the guys, so and they're great. They're really, really they're good state? humans. In Idaho. Idaho. Oh boy, that's yeah. got to be fun. Oh, it's so fun! I cannot do some wait. More push-ups. Um, we, <laughs> I, it, it is exhausting. Oh, no Tell you, oh I'll gosh. do some with you. So I did not get a chance to properly acclimate. To the oh. altitude when I got out there. Where were you guys hunting at? Do you remember what the level uh, was? We were at about 10,000. Okay, that's, so that's pretty steep. 9,500, I think, to 10,000, somewhere in there. So anyway, so um, <laughs> the second day, first day we get rained out. Second day we got that cinnamon uh, cinnamon uh, bear, the color phase bear. And uh, and, I, and the few of us said, you know, we'll go get the trucks. You know, you guys pack it out. So they had about a quarter of the way to go, and we had to go up the hill that was like you know sh- like seriously one to one ratio it was just like horrifying on the way down it was bad on the way was- so i'm like first quarter i'm like okay cool you know whatever i'm not dying so, you know got about to halfway i'm starting to feel it by three quarters away i'm like <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you need a toe strap I, dude i can barely breathe by the time I got to the top, I was just, like, ready to barf up a lung. I'm like, <laughs> guys, you got to give me a minute. Yeah. I got, you know, I'm just, like, the altitude. Like, dude, it's the altitude. I'm like, I don't feel like I'm in that kind of bad shape. You know, I always stay in good shape. And I'm, yeah. I'm like, Dave, it's the altitude. Don't beat yourself up. I'm like, oh, that's right, the altitude. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was brutal. Yeah, that was brutal. So uh, but, uh, just real quick. Yes. Um, Dave, is, is fishing hunting? It's a, it's a oh, hot topic. Oh, so one know. of my episodes, we went after sailfish, and I believe that anything that you're in the pursuit of is hunting. Oh, yeah. So we so, had a, it's been a, like a hot topic in our episodes she because. She told me that. Yeah, Tom has this, like, yeah, it could be hunting. For me, it's totally not. And the reason for me, and, and if I can rationalize well, why don't it for you, you shut your dirty mouth and you're the hunting guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm That's true. kidding, but go ahead. I've, share, I have please. less of a leg to stand on. But I am a, a very analytical guy. So for me, if hunting and fishing are the same thing, why are they different industries? Because they're different species. One's shot with rifles, shotguns, that's hunting. Okay, that's like separating out bird hunting from deer hunting from bear hunting from some use a rifle and some use a shotgun, right? And you don't make and that distinction. But, to, but and to, some use a boat, right? Yeah, but, so, but to me, all that's like hunting. And then fishing, you fish all these different types of fish, right? Right. But it's all water based versus land based. Right. And so to me it's like they're they're just different animals. Like fishing is fishing and hunting is hunting because they are industri- industry different. It to me the like relationship is like sports. Define hunt can you look up the definition of hunting for yeah, me? Let's do that. Hit, look up the definition Google. of hunting and put it out there. I believe that if you like no one ever says if, I'm gonna go hunt crappies. But if you stunt, if you if you if you that's not true. Because I know some people that do this. I'm going to get after some some crap. Get after some. Go some hunt slabs. some. Yeah, yeah, some slabs. <laughs> but if you um, take the time to learn the animal, understand the animal, learn its environment, learn its habitat, and do all those things in pursuit of that animal, that's the definition of hunting. Huh. So musky hunters would always argue. Yes. Okay. Hunting. Hunting is a practice of seeking, pursuing, and capturing and killing of wildlife. Or feral animals. Boom. Is a fish a feral animal? No. No, but it's wildlife. Yeah, it is wildlife. Okay. So the most common reasons for humans to hunt are to harvest useful animal products for recreation, tax, or eating. food. Eating should have been right there on the It front should have been the that. first thing is, <laughs> yeah. is feed is eating, but it's not. It but, should say to get in my belly. But let me go back to this. Hunting is the practice of seeking, pursuing, and capturing or killing of wildlife. Or feral animals. Yeah. 
So that's why I consider fishing hunting because you're in pursuit and and killing wildlife. Yeah, like I said, the, the, the distinction for me is just because they are so different industry, from an industry standpoint. Oh, yeah. You got all these guys that are like big. Like I have a bunch of buddies. But all that, that, is, but all that is is marketing, bro. Okay. That's got yep. nothing to do with the purity of hunting. Yep. That's marketing. It's tough to yeah. do both. I mean, unless you got yeah. a lot of time and money, it's oh, hard yeah. to be good at both. Oh, yeah. And I, sure. never got I saw you wearing the Sitka gear, by the way. Oh, yeah, wearing a little sick of gear. Yeah, for that's not like hunting. five bucks a shirt. <laughs> no, it's not. That's, that's for darn sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, I got to play another show. You, I need more hunting gear. You can't even buy a glove for five bucks. Uh, that's 30 okay. bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never got into fishing, Dave. I yeah. always felt that it took up my hunting time. Yeah, you know, I, I dig. Yeah, just, Dave. <laughs> I just, no, I just dig being, oh, <laughs> I just dig being, like, sometimes it's nice to just be out in the water. You hear the water slapping up against the side of the boat. Oh, yeah. Yep. And you're out there fishing, and you're just like, it's just another peaceful place for me to be. And uh, while I do hunt way more than I fish, I do love to fish. I love to ice fish. And, it, again, it comes down to that hang time with your buddies. Yep. Ice fishing and, and, and fishing is just a blast. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? So yeah, adult I think beverages. What's that? A few adult beverages. A few adult, yeah, some delicious libations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of my friends fish big time. Big yeah. time fishermen, but yeah, never got the never got the itch. Now you never got that big butt. Yeah, no. you know I, that came from my uncles too. You know they all lived on lakes, and so I grew up fishing. You know lakes and whatnot, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, so. the biggest fishing we used to do was uh, we used to go to Canada spring bear hunting every year, mm. and uh, ice out walleyes. Oh, almost every cast. Yeah, literally, you'd catch hundreds of them every day. Oh yeah. And then about five o'clock, we'd hang it up. Go yeah. to the bear stand and hunt bear in the yeah. evening. And well, we've got some family that has a flying fishing lodge, uh, North Spirit Lake Lodge, in Ontario. And I'm telling you what, it's it's we wouldn't even keep fish for shore lunch until about 20 minutes for lunch, right? Because right. you just catch so many. What, what you know? Right. And we'd only keep the the really good eaters. You right. know what I mean? Keep those 18 inches and whatnot. Yep. And and I'm telling you that that place is great. North Spirit Lake or North Spirit Lake That's and Margo Lake. Yeah, yeah, and so when they ever open up Canada again, we'll make that yeah. one of our episodes going up there after. Canadia. Yeah, Canadia. <laughs> yeah, going up. They couldn't even open their lodge last year because they weren't considered yeah, essential Some workers. Some of those people are just That's tough. dying. Super tough. They yeah. got this guy, Justin just Trudeau, up there. You know, when Ontario yeah. discontinued the spring bear hunt, it killed a lot of the lodges. Dude, and, you know, oh, the yeah. whole huge Ontario, as we know it, north of Minnesota, is governed by this city that's so close to New York, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, right, really right. close to New York. And they govern that that western, that northwestern. Chunk. They would like Thunder Bay to be their capital. Right. And so many of the uh, resorts closed down because of that. Now it's, they've it's started the spring bear hunt again. Yeah. But I'm watching, I'm, uh, you know, I, as I'm sure you are, we're avid hockey fans, oh, yeah. all of us here in Minnesota, and I've been watching the playoffs. And uh, Boston, man, there ain't a seat to be had. And then you go over to Canada and you watch uh, Winnipeg playing the Canadians, and they are still not letting anybody. Yeah, it's in. crazy. And that's yeah. their life up there. The yeah, hockey is like their religion. Yeah. I've got friends up there. We lost a leg of tour up there, and they're just so frustrated. They're so ready for their country to be let going loose. Crazy. And, oh, they're losing their minds, and it, it's it's really having a, uh, I think, an even bigger psychological. Yeah. Uh, issue up there than it is down here in the states, just because of the winter. Their winter is much oh, longer, man. and it's just the, the isolation is starting to really wear on people. And uh, that's oh. been my friend. Yeah, the depression. That's been my friends. You know, um, that have been sharing with me. So they're just really struggling hard. Yeah. What was the lodge called again? North Spirit Lake Lodge. So Danny, make a note of that, please. And, and some really, <laughs> yeah, we'll get you up there. I mean, I know you're not a big fishing guy, but we'll get you up there and. Such great people. Yeah. Like, like, like Bill and Val are just the most amazing Christian people. They're wonderful. And, uh, and um, yeah, and then the lodge is phenomenal. It's great. It's got these great cabins. The fishing out there is insane. Do it's they just, do any uh, moose hunts or bear hunts? No, they're a fishing no, lodge. They do strictly yeah, fishing. fishing and then come to the end of the fishing season, they yeah. shut her down. And, wow. yeah, but it's just great. I mean, it's, yeah, 
I caught the biggest walleye of my life out there. A little over 30 inches, big old wow. fat belly on it. 30 inch Yeah, walleye. it was a fat oh, yeah. old pig. You should have seen the belly on this thing, man. It was just you a You must hog. have thought it was a muskie coming in. No, the no. At first I thought it was a snag. <laughs> and I'm like reefing on it and like nothing was happening. And I'm like, all of a I'm like, oh, my snag's moving. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it worked that thing for a while, man. It was awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Oh, but um, no, you know, it, it's funny because we brought my dad up. My dad just passed away about four months ago. and I'm very sorry to hear that. And Yeah, wow. we, we lost my dad and my wife's dad both within a month of each other. So no we way. lost both both our dads. We lost in less than a month. So it was kind of rough. And, uh, That's terrible. And I was thinking back to uh, my dad's a character. You know, he's 100% Irish. So I'm half Italian, half Irish. My mom's Italian. My dad's Irish. So you're spicy, oh, bro. No, yeah. no, no. My dad was a mellow Irish, though. You know, okay. As a matter of fact, I feel like I'm a horrible Irishman because I really don't drink that much and I don't fight. You know, I think, I, I think I'm kind of a crappy Irishman. But but uh, but uh, unless you're going to unless you attack my family, then it's on. But right. But um, but anyway, so my dad, my I brought my dad, and a buddy of mine brought up his dad. So you had all these young bucks, and then you got our two dads. And who do you think got the noise complaint? My dad and my and his buddy. <laughs> they're there, they're down there drinking a little whiskey and having you know laughing a little too loud. And all of a sudden, knock 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 at my door. Hey, can you guys go tell your dads be quiet? We're getting complaints from the other people here. I'm like, oh my god. So they were proud of that, actually. It was hilarious. They're in their, like, 70s, and they're getting the noise complaint, you know. Yeah, so it was pretty great. Look, tell your teenagers to calm down. Actually, it's, it's the grandfathers. It's the, yeah, it's the dads down there. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, uh, yeah, so it was uh, – that was really cool. My dad caught, like, a 40-plus-inch uh, northern. It was a monstrous north. It was like, no, it wasn't really? 40. It was just under 40 inches, like 39-something wow. inch northern, and he was super pumped about it. And then Big northern. I'm not going to say who took the picture, but someone I love very dearly took the picture. I'm like, this is it. This is the father-son moment of a lifetime. Dad's got this big, fat hog in his lap, you know, and I'm behind with my shoulder on his hand. I'm like, I'm going to frame this picture. It's going to mean everything to me. He freaking cut my head off. It's my dad holding this big thing and like the shoulders and your down. arm <laughs> and my arm around his shoulders and I'm completely out of the picture. I'm like, no, my moment. Yeah, it's our picture. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was inspired. Yeah, I was inspired. Yeah. But anyway, so um, man, I could talk hunting stories all day long. Well, I was just gonna say we're uh, believe it or not, we're getting up to the to the that two hour mark. Oh man. Oh, yeah. What I would love to do before we let you get out of here. Yeah is here just one of your favorite or maybe your favorite hunting story specifically because we've talked enough fish for my favorite case, hunting boys. story ever uh <laughs> let's was get my, something with fur on it here <laughs> it was my very first buck ever okay and uh you know they say that uh a trophy doesn't have to be a massive rack yes right sir. a trophy is something that just means something to you it could be a doe it could be a whatever and i was i believe i was 16 years old and I remember it like it was yesterday, and I made myself stop and remember it. I was sitting on a ridge with a valley between, you know, in the middle, the other side of the ridge, and I hear, you know. This, what state are you in? I'm in the state of Wisconsin. Okay. And I'm up by Crivets in a town called Athelstein, the old family farm, uh, my, my wife's family farm. And I see this fork horn enters into the sunlight, and you can see – the sun glistening off his rack. And uh, and I remember like, oh, my gosh, it's so pretty. And then it came down the embankment, came right up behind me, shot him. He went like two feet into the trees right there next to me. Uh, I shot him at maybe 25 yards and died immediately. With your Matthews? No, no, with, with a gun, with my okay. 30 at 6. Okay, great. And... Uh, and I'll I'll never forget that deer. It's the the and I've shot some monster bucks, and that's my favorite deer of all time. That's cool, bar none. Yep, it doesn't have to like be a monster. And I'm picturing that, you know, yeah. the sun. Oh, and, the sun! You see, like the, it was the only spot the sun was hitting was right on this deer. It was just the coolest thing. It's just uh, it has stuck with me ever since. That's my my favorite favorite of all time. I get asked a lot why I mount all of my animals and. I certainly haven't mounted all of my animals. No, it's just a taste. When you look at yeah. them, 
when you look at them. Well, when you've been hunting for 90 years, it's like. <laughs> oh, dang, you're so hurtful. <laughs> there's all there's all a memory there, kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> 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 everyone's a memory yeah isn't that cool it is cool you know i i would say my second favorite of all time was i was pheasanting in south dakota deep snow and i see this hole where a pheasant had burrowed into this bank you know so my buddy comes up and he starts you know his no dog is sticking his nose in there and so i go off to the side and uh, he calls his dog out, and he just starts kicking in the hole. And this pheasant exploded oh, out of the wow. snow like a phoenix rising out of the ashes. If I, Oh, I, I'm so pained I wasn't wearing a GoPro or had that in slow-mo. It just went, whoosh, and its wingtips were curled up like this. And the snow was just going doosh off of it as it... And then, pow! And then I killed her. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm like, it was so this, gorgeous. Did you forget to pull the trigger? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I know. You're thinking, uh, dude, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen as it exploded out of the snow with its wingtips curled up. And it was just, it was phenomenal. It's moments like that that are just yep. like so cool. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, brother. Yeah, well, uh, real quick, Dave, tell yeah. all the listeners and viewers, because we're on both audio and video platforms. You got it. Where can they go to find you? All right. All my socials. My Instagram is just Dave, Ma or my uh, Facebook is just Dave there's McElroy. The yep, there's my website, DaveMcElroy.com. Uh, Instagram and Twitter are DMACBand. So there's no A in my last name, but there is in my socials. It's D M A C B A N D, DMACBand. If you go on anything, I've got my own Spotify channel. I've got my own Pandora channel. I'm on Apple Music, Amazon. Uh, my music's everywhere. Can you go back to the bottom there, Danny? It had all the social media li links, I think, didn't it? Uh, but I saw a bunch of symbols. There's a oh, there Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. It's kind of everywhere, but it's DMAC Band. And then, of course, all my music is just my name, Dave McElroy, just whatever platform you're on. And, uh, You're the first search result on Google, by the way, if you look up Dave McElroy. Yeah, you know, thank you. That's kind of cool. You know, and there's a, got about a gazillion of them on Facebook or whatever. But if you um, usually you can just have to put in Dave M C E and then I'll pop up, which is kind of fun. It's good and SEO. I don't know what SEO means. Search engine optimization. There you go. Someone on your, <laughs> your team is doing a good job. Yeah. Oh, I, Aristo Media is absolutely the best. I'm telling you, I had a couple, I had a troll today that they had to deal with. And I had a couple of, uh, uh, like, you know, people try and impersonate you. Right. So every week or every couple of weeks, I get at least one or two people that try and pretend they're me. Like they'll, they'll take my picture and they'll create a fake account under my name. These guys have them down five minutes, five minutes. They're gone. And it's like, Really? I, yeah, my previous company it would take me like a week to two weeks to maybe get them down, and then, you know more. And uh, but it's not about that. These guys are just crazy creative. They're also extremely good people. Uh, Matt Watkins is one of the best human beings I know in Nashville, and um, and they really love their clients, and they really take great care of their clients, and they watch over their clients. They don't just phone it in. Like we talked about before, they are actively involved with their clients, and it's super cool. And uh, I'm just so glad to be affiliated with them and to be working with them. They're awesome. So, yeah. Well, Dave, it's been an absolute honor and pleasure to have you here on the podcast. Tom Cat, that. seriously right now, man, thank you so much for having me on. You, you little rascal. Thank you, guys. <laughs> seriously, I appreciate you guys so much. What a blast. We could have sat here and talked for hours. We could have. You Easily. Know, when it comes to country music and hunting, and you combine the both, yeah, we could sit here for hours and hours. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think Shane just alluded to the fact that we've already gone two hours. Yeah. Yes. We try to keep it at an hour and a half. All right. But Yeah, well, this is just too much fun. And I got to ask all of you, my new single, Vibin', comes out the first week of July. Please grab it on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. Download it. Share it with your friends. We will do and that. I would appreciate that so much. And I want to say God bless all y'all. And uh, until I see you next time at a show or whatever, I'll be praying for you every Friday. Talked about this earlier. I pray for all my friends across the country, and I'll be praying for you. So thank you so much, and God bless you. And thank you, boys, for having me on tonight. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. You guys are awesome. Best podcast I've ever been on, ever. <laughs> and I have my own podcast. 
<laughs> so that's saying something. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. David, yeah. I can't tell you what a treat it was to have you here. Yeah. God bless you. And I'm so happy, and Shane is too, and I know you are too, that we had an opportunity to share our faith with a lot of people. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, Great that's, fellowship. That's what it's yeah. all about, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, that's, it's what I'm all about, literally. My wife, myself, my kids, that's, that's what we're about. I hope it struck home with some individuals listening yeah. or watching. Touching telling you what, your life is just going to be better. if you just. Yeah. I tell people that don't know the Lord, that don't have any relationship with the Lord, I said, just do one thing for me. For a week, every night say, Lord, I'm here. Please talk to me. Yep. And I promise you he will talk to you. There's no way he'll leave you. Yep. out there he just wants you to turn to him and he's ready he's there amen, he's waiting amen so amen. just if you're hurting if your life is not going the way you want it to just say lord please talk to me i want to hear you and, and i promise you he will he will talk to you in one way or the other just be open to it good job yeah peace out y'all <laughs> Thanks for tuning in this week, folks, for Boots and Backstraps. Yeah. Don't forget to uh, send your questions, comments, and snide remarks to Boots and Backstraps podcast at gmail.com. And, uh, of course, check us out on all of the, as Dave has already gone over, a litany of the audio and video platforms. We're yeah. also out there on those as well. Yeah. And uh, we're looking forward to another episode next week. So, TK, let's bring this plane in for a landing. What a great, great show. Hey, folks, whether you're belting out your favorite country song like trucker hat or you're out there <laughs> pursuing your favorite game animal i encourage you to use that same passion to pursue the lord he will teach you to shoot straight we look forward to seeing you next week come on now honey's on looking for bag straps way deep in the woods tracking in a swamp to a hay field under the harvest moon when the tags are filled, it's time to switch up our boots. Head down to the honky tonk, get us a swing dance or two. We're talking about boots and backstraps. <laughs>